On a cold, perfect night for high school football, welcome in to Spartanburg Viking football as we wrap up the Beacon Drive-In pregame show. Alongside Tyler Sugar, and I'm Ryan Cleary, it's the Gaffney Indians and the Spartanburg Vikings win, and you go to the state championship, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Good evening, everybody. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We hope you join us wherever you are throughout Spartanburg County. You can listen to Fox Sports Spartanburg 98.3 FM. Don't forget, anywhere you can listen at SpartanburgSportsRadio.com and live on the Fox Sports Spartanburg app. It is free to download. The website is free to listen to. We want you to be able to listen to your Spartanburg Vikings. Many of you are here tonight. Some of you have radios. You've tweeted me and told me. Thank you so much for doing that. It is cold, it is windy. A lot of you have sent notes that said we're freezing, but we're here to support our Vikings, and we're gonna have a lot of fun in doing that tonight. Gaffney has filled out their side. Viking fans, this is the biggest Spartanburg crowd I've seen since Dorman was here back in 2019. The Gaffney Indians are gonna make the long walk across the street here in just a minute behind the scoreboard. To our right, 18 paces away from turf, is the Spartanburg Viking locker room where Coach Hodge is addressing the team one final time, getting you set coming out. What many people have said is a year too early. A lot of people thought it would be next year when Spartanburg was at this point of the season, but it's not. Our guys have learned how to play through chaos. They've learned how to win, and they want to be the last team standing, and the captains are making their way out to midfield right now. It's number one, Raheem Jeter, number three, Javaris Rice, number 61, Chase Rose, and number 20, Judah McJimsey. And Tyler, the crowds are rising to their feet just for the captains tonight. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. We're getting ready for kickoff here. This is going to be hopefully what we plan on being an epic matchup between these two story programs and another great story in the long line of histories. Uh, between these two football teams. I can't wait for kickoff. Look, it's been looking forward to this one since we <laughs> ended the Ridgeview game last week and then we found out Gaffney won. Uh, get another shot at these guys uh, from week zero. How great is it to be here for all four rounds of the playoffs as the Gaffney Indians make their way down the stairs. We've got some good friends over there at Gaffney. I just spent a few minutes with Coach Miller, uh, which was awesome. He wished the very best for our boys tonight. That Gaffney crowd's gonna be awfully loud on that far side, but our Viking fans are gonna be louder. They're, make no mistake, there are more of us here than there are of them. There are a lot of them here, but our fans are filled out really nicely here. Uh, the stands are, are not 100% full, but we have a lot more seats on our side than they do on theirs. And we have a lot of folks still trying to make their way in here as well. Gaffney has won the toss, they have deferred. And Tyler, from what I understand, if we'd have won the toss, we would have won the football. I don't blame them. And it's been that way for the last few weeks. It's been terrific. And there the Spartanburg Vikings have emerged from the locker room. J.D. Cash ran over to get the, to the American flag. Down here to our right, it's just a few steps. And we're all huddled up. The gold helmets, Navy jerseys, Navy pants tonight, the gold numbers. And Tyler Sugar, here we come. The Indians about to make their way out as well in their black helmets, white jerseys with the black numbers and the black pants and the gold trim. Vikings going with the same look we had when the Dorman Cavaliers were here just a few weeks ago. And Gaffney, as they traditionally do, will make their way out of the field late. Here they come. Led out by Dan Jones. And Dan's awfully fired up over there, Tyler. We like Dan. Dan's a great guy. Gotten to know him very well. And frankly, honestly, I I'm glad he's still around Spartanburg in this area uh, coaching. He's a good guy, and uh, he's become a big part of Gaffney football. Yeah, he has a uh, second winning as coach all time uh, over there at Gaffney. Uh, so he's had a, um, had a great career. Uh, of course, he had to follow in the footsteps of Phil Strickland, but he, he did it, and he did it well. 
So here we go. We're going to start with the ball first tonight. We're going to be moving from our right to left. And Tyler, you know, when you're playing a team who can run the football, you want to come out and make an impact early. You want to constantly try to make them play from behind. Now, they had to do that last week against Northwestern, and they were able to, but they're much more comfortable with the lead the way they play, th play on both offense and defense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is a good, good team, though, with a solid, solid defense and a great running team. They don't want to have to throw the ball, and they haven't really had, had to a ton all year because of their great running backs and behind that good offensive line. And this is going to be a battle for the Vikings tonight against a very good Gaffney Indian team. Tyler, they don't get no better than this, bro. No, it does not. Wow, there's a lot of emotion in this stadium tonight. Spartanburg has made their way out onto the field. J.D. Lawson, Jay Staggs, the up backs, Javaris Rice, the return man. Here come the Gaffney Indians. If you like high school football, you're going to love this. It's Gaffney and Spartanburg for the Upper State Championship. Alongside Tyler Sugar, I'm Ryan Clary. Here we go. Gaffney to kick this from our left to right, and we are underway. A high kick that's going to sail right out of bounds, and we'll take it at the 35-yard line. A.J. Hames with that a little too far to the left. So here comes the junior quarterback, number one, Raheem Jeter, six foot three, 236-pound junior, 200. I beg your pardon, 2,710 yards through the air this season, 248 yards per game. He has 23 touchdowns through the air and six picks. He's also run for three touchdowns. He'll bring out Dreek Carter and four wide receivers with him. Here we go. First and 10, ball on the far hash, Raheem Jeter in the shotgun. Gaffney with a really a 3-3-5 look right now. Showing blitz off the right edge. Here they come. We pick it up nicely. Raheem back to throw. Now he's under heavy pressure, and he's going to be dropped back at the 28-yard line. It's Carlos Lopez who got in there. Tyler, we picked up the blitz, but we didn't pick up the middle of that defensive line. No, we didn't. Uh, going to be a problem all night. Really good player in Lopez up there who had a 10 tackles for a loss coming in. And give him a sack on that one. They have flit Putnam and Lopez. Lopez is on the outside right now. Trips to the right. Jeter will hand it off to Dree Carter. Up the middle, not much. Maybe the 31-yard line. And it'll bring up third down and 14. And again, Carlos Lopez with a big play along with it looked like Landon Bullock, who was flying in that time. Calabir Hoey as well. He started at corner last, last uh, time we faced these guys. They got him in at safety right now. Third down and 14. Jeter in the shotgun, four wides to either side. We got to get to our own 45. They blitz. We pick it up. Jeter has to step up now. He's going to be dropped and sacked. And it's Brayshawn Littlejohn. Tyler, this defense, we've talked about it. It's for real. And they can come out flying at our quarterback. And they're not bringing a lot of bodies. No. We're having a tough time picking up the three and the four. Yeah, uh, really fast, really physical guys up there for Gaffney to force this punt. Uh, two sacks in three plays uh, for the Gaffney defense. John Love back on his own 15-yard line, kicking from our right to left. Really good snap, they come after it. Love gets rid of it. Oh, John Love was hit, they don't throw a flag. They're gonna catch it at the 30 and trip. Does Hoey at the 41 yard line and Gaffney will have good field position. So here comes Grayson Loftus and these two really good running backs. We'll see who they bring out first. A lot of these Gaffney players tuck their jerseys up which drives me nuts. Tyler Smith's the tailback. They'll go three wide receivers and a tight end to start this one. Ball on the near hash at the 41. We went three and out. Tyler, we go four down linemen. Murph Epps is in the ball game as well. They hand it off to Tyler Smith right up the middle, trying to bounce it to the outside. He gets out of a tackle. Far sideline, he's got a first down and into Viking territory out of bounds at the 45, a gain of 14 yards. Yeah, there's nowhere for him to go up the middle as the Vikings had that snuffed out, but he bounced it outside to the left side and ran for a long time. 
We didn't go four down linemen at any point last week. We did on the first play here. There's less space on the outside if we do that, and they found it first and 10 at our 45-yard line. Loftus in the shotgun, Tyler Smith to his right. Three wide receiver look. Loftus wants to throw it. They'll sling it out to Tyler Smith. That's got to be a block in the back. They're not going to call it. They're going to score. Nope, now they're going to throw a flag. I mean, pick your flag. Pick your one. One, two, three. They got the third one. This will be coming way back. They had three block in the backs, and the near side judge finally threw one. And Gaffney can boo all they want. They should be celebrating that the first one wasn't called, and this wasn't first and 20. Because that thing was thrown about nine yards down the field. But there were, count them, three different block in the backs you could have chosen from. They'll probably end up calling this one more of a holding the one down the field. It will be a nope. hole. And I thought they gave the block in the back, so whatever it is, there were three different ones that our three guys had good position on, and none of them got to Tyler Smith, and I guess there's a reason because of it. So make this first and 11 at the 46, but Tyler, make no mistake, Gaffney has come out swinging here early. First and 11 from our 46. Loftus in the shotgun, chunks it out right. It's gonna be caught by Jeffries at the 41 yard line, and he's wrapped up immediately by Jaden Brown at the 40, but they get a gain of about seven. Maybe even gotten to the 39, we'll see. Yeah, there's gonna be more than the 39. It's gonna be second down in about four. Yep, second and four from the 39. Our guys looked a little shocked right now, Tyler. They got to settle in a little bit. Four wide receiver set. Loftus of the shotgun. They call a man in motion. They don't give it to him. They give it right up the middle to Tyler Smith. They'll have a first down. Crosses the 35 and lowers his shoulder and kind of just stumbles forward to the 32-yard line. And it'll look like DeAndre Davison on that tackle, but Gaffney on the move here early. Ken Littlejohn will check in. They'll go Davis and Little John in the backfield. Pick your poison here, Tyler. Mm. 9.08 to play in the first quarter. They're both in the backfield. Three wide receiver look. Loftus calls for it. He'll give it to Little John. He'll stretch it out left. Squires had him. Blows to the ground. Blows to the ground. That's ours. That's ours. That's ours. Jacob Madison has the football, and it's our football. Let's go. Needed a break. We got one. Jacob Madison with the strip and the fumble recovery. The junior, one of the biggest plays of his career so far, and it's Viking football yep. on our own 38. Absolutely, it looked like he was going to get out of that tackle, and, and Madison just reached up there and ripped it right out of Little John's arms and fell on the ground. He fell right on top of it. A great job by stripping that one out and getting the recovery, and a big, big takeaway for the Vikings to stop the driving Indians. First and 10 for Raheem Jeter. They'll hand it off to Dree Carter. He bounces off a lineman, tries to get to the left. May have gotten the 40. Nope, they're going to say a little short of that for a gain about one and a half. Jesus Dowdle with the tackle. Second down, let's call it about nine. Got to run the football tonight against these guys, Tyler. Oh, yeah, got to be able to find some running lanes. Jeter in the shotgun, trips to the right. One wide receiver down here. They are double teaming Taheem. Drake right up the middle. He gets past the 40, up to the 45, and one arm pulls him down at the 46. It'll be third down and two. I love going right back to Drake right there. That's not something we do a lot of. Yeah, not something that looked like Gaffney really expected there either, so a great play call. Brings up a real third and short Tyler, possibility. Eddie Tate McDowell, the safety, is not leaving his corner, King Dowdle, with one-on-one -on -one coverage down here on Taheem Richardson. I don't blame him. In fact, that's Tim McGill down here too, not uh, not Dowdle. Third down and two. Same formation again for the Vikings. And Jeter on a quarterback keeper. Nice pull by the guard and up across the 50 to the 47-yard line. Tyler, that was actually Zach Moore, the left tackle, who pulled around and led the way. He did, and that opened up a nice hole for Raheem Jeter who kind of just lowered that shoulder and went into that pile and was able to pick up some big yardage and pick up a first down. That is a Vic Bailey Volkswagen Viking first down. Jay Staggs, Quay Moore, Andrew Danton on the far side of the field. Taheem Richardson down here by his lonesome. First and 10 at the Gaffney 47. Jeter in the shotgun will turn, will hand it off to Carter. Grats up the 45, powers his way to the 40 down to the 39 yard line. A gain of about eight. It's a great job by 
Dream Carter to get down there and get in between those tackles and pick up some big yardage. That's a big first down pickup. If he can pick up seven and eight yards on first down, it'll be a good night for Spartanburg. Jesus Dowdle with another tackle. Carlos Lopez in on that one as well. Second down in about two and a half. Jeter in the shotgun trips to the right. Under seven to play in the first quarter. Stags in motion, now he goes back. Jeter's gonna keep it, pitch it to Stags in the backfield. Look out, he's gonna be swallowed up by Jesus Dowdle at the 42 yard line. We lost a couple. It's a scary pitch, too, by Raheem Jeter. You'd almost like to see Raheem just say, you know what, I'm bigger. I'm just gonna plow forward and maybe get a yard on this play instead of risk the big play or the not the big play there. Third down and four. Really third down and five. Jeter in the shotgun, twins to either side. 17 on the play clock, Tree Carter will switch sides. Ball's on the far hash. They're in a 3-3-5 look right now. Raheem back to throw. Over the middle, Danton bobbled it, but he's got it up to the 35, to the 34 yard line. It's a gain of about eight. And a Vic Bailey Volkswagen Viking first down, catch number 63 on the year for Andrew Danton. He's been a big factor for the Spartanburg Vikings, especially as of late, and a big catch there to pick up another first down. Tyler, we withstood that initial big uppercut to start this game. We've responded well. Here we go. Trips to the left. One wide receiver up top. Raheem in the shotgun, and he's going to keep it. He goes right behind his left guard, gets up to maybe the 30-yard line. Kyrell Owens, the big right guard, led the way, Tyler, for a gain of about four. Yeah, big pickup. Good job um, of Raheem Jeter just running behind his blockers and picking up a few yards. They'll say more around the 31 just inside of it, so we'll call it second down, about six and a half. Moore and Taheem down here. Now, Tyler, look, Taheem's got some one-on-one -on -one coverage. Jeter's in the shotgun. They show blitz up the middle. Here they come, and Dreek Carter is smashed in the backfield. They came flying up the middle that time. Jesus Dowdle, who's had a big ball game so far, blew that up around the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10. Four fifty to go in the first quarter. No score on the Impex pre-owned scoreboard. Jeter's in the shotgun, twins to either side. Dreek to his right. Three down lineman for Gaffney. They show blitz on the left side. They come right up the middle. We swing it out to Dreek, trying to get out there, and he's not going to have much as they had two guys over there and just blew that play up, maybe a gain of one. There is a flag, however, and Tyler, this might be a legal formation on Spartanburg, which has not been called on us a lot this year. They'll decline it. And bring up fourth and nine. And that's exactly what it is. Langston Green's going to come in the ball game for Jay Staggs. Tyler, you're kind of in no man's land. You think about going for it. I mean, our offense is staying out there. Yeah, uh, you roll the dice here. It looks like what Coach Hodge is thinking, leaving the offense out there on the field. Dre Sims is out there at left guard right now. 15 on the play clock, the offense is on the field. We got to get to basically their 24 yard line. Fourth down and nine. Jeter in the shotgun, back to throw, looking over the middle. He's got Dan, is caught at the 17, he breaks the tackle. 10, five, touchdown, Vikings! Raheem Jeter to Andrew Denton for 33 yards, and it's Spartanburg who strikes for six to nothing with an extra point coming up. Andrew Denton getting it done again. That's his fifth touchdown of the season. He has been absolutely terrific, especially, like I said, in the late going here in the playoffs for Spartanburg, has been that guy. John Love on for the extra point. Boy, that thing was almost blocked, and it is right up there. And good, 4-1 left to play in the first quarter. It's Spartanburg who strikes first. We're up seven to nothing. Take a 30 second timeout. You're listening to Viking Football.
Wakefield Automotive Drive summaries 10 plays, 62 yards for the Spartanburg Vikings. A 34-yard touchdown pass from Raheem, Dre Raheem Jeter to Andrew Danton makes it 7-0 Vikings here in the first quarter with 4.01 to play in the first quarter. That is the 24th touchdown pass of the year for Raheem Jeter. All our kicks tonight are brought to you by Whit Bishop, attorney at law. I want to thank my friend Whit Bishop for continuing to be a sponsor of Spartanburg Viking football. His kids have come through and are at Spartanburg High School as John Love kicks this one into the end zone for another touchback. Witt has been a huge part of what we do at Spartanburg High School for the radio broadcast for so many years. And I want to thank my friend Witt Bishop and his family for supporting Spartanburg Viking Radio. Uh, this, it's been awesome. I love our partnership with him and Witt. I just wanted to personally say thank you to you, buddy, uh, for your many years of being with us. Witt Bishop is my oldest client, not oldest in age, but he, he's been with me at Spartanburg the longest. And I appreciate that. Witt and Cliff Gobert have been here for so long with us, it's insane. So both those guys, I'll thank Cliff later coming up the halftime report. Thank you guys so, so very, very much. We jumped off sides. By the way. We jumped off sides, can't do that. We're up seven to nothing. Got, can't have those unforced penalties tonight. Hey, it was the whole defensive line. Every one of them moved, all four. Yeah, can't have that. And we are going with four down linemen again. Murph Epps in the ball game. First down and five now, Loftus in the shotgun. They go trips to the left, one wide receiver near side. 4-0-1 to go in the first quarter. Spartanburg 7, Gaffney nothing. Loftus back to throw, quick little hook over the middle. That's going to be a first down. It's a great tackle by J.D. Lawson, but they get to the 31-yard line just like that. And that's going to be, is that nine? That's Jadarius Littlejohn. Again, a six. So first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Loftus in the shotgun. Four wide receiver look from their own 31, ball on the far hash. Shotgun snap, Loftus looking left. He'll sling it out on a simple out route, caught again by Little John. He'll get up to the 37. It's a gain of six. Tyler, every one of Loftus's throws so far has been quick right. to their first option. Yeah, it, he, hasn't had to scan, he hasn't scanned the field. He hasn't tried to throw one deep. Uh, yeah, he's been doing a little quick, short dump off passes. So obviously they see something here in the defense. And it, look at this, Tyler. We have no safeties right now. I mean, basically it's no safeties. Zero coverage right now. They hand it off. No, they play fake it to the left, trying to go far sideline, spinning and getting up to the 40 for a gain of a couple more. It'll be third down and one that time. That looked like uh, 18. That's Amazon Little John, his eighth catch of the year. How many of those guys do they have? Well, there's four in the starting lineup alone. Third down and one from their own 40. And as they bring some new bodies in, don't they have to wait on us? No, we call a timeout. We had to call a timeout. Tyler, we were running in Hunter Turner, a 6'4", 260-pound senior. Yeah, he's a big one. And we couldn't get somebody off in time. I know in college you have to wait and sub. I thought that we're doing that in high school, though, still, too. You had to wait. They brought in new bodies, but we had to run somebody else out there. And, and that's I think that's what our coaches are talking to their official about right now. We'll keep it right here. All our timeouts are brought to you by Watchworks, 1040 Fernwood, Glendale Road. Tyler, the game's kind of settled in a little bit. We're up 7 to nothing. What have you seen so far that you like, and what have you seen that's making you a little worried? Well, our defense, you know, has given up some yardage so far um, in this game, but, of course, making the big stand down here last time with uh, Jacob Madison getting the strip, uh, the fumble, and recovering it, and we took advantage of it, and that's important. It's taking advantage of turnovers. When Gaffney makes mistakes, you got to make them regret it. And they, they fumbled the football away there, gave it to us, gave us an extra possession. And the Vikings were able to capitalize on that and go score a touchdown. I like the way our offense is playing. They're playing very well. Uh, they're, they're getting the plays off and uh, doing a very good job so far in this early going, and I hope we can keep it up. Incredible crowd out here tonight. There are a ton of Viking fans. Looks like the drum line is here tonight for Spartanburg, which is great. Gaffney has filled their side up as well. Third down and one from their 40. They're going to directly snap it to Tyler Smith. They're going to have a first down, but there's no, a flag. Not. And Tyler's going to score because he's just faster than everybody else on this field. But Tyler, you think this is coming back? I believe it was an illegal formation. I don't think they were set. Tyler, I don't think at any point they were set. And you can say, well, here on the near side, maybe that's just bad luck. The problem was, Tyler, 
they were still getting set, we were getting set, and they snapped the football, yep. and I think that's why they scored. That's what it was, an illegal shift on, uh, on Gaffney to back them up five yards, be third and six. They had guys still trying to get set, and they just snapped it too fast. By the way, Tyler Smith can fly. He is really fast. If he gets out in space, he can score from anywhere. You know, I was talking to the time. Gaffney radio crew. We were talking about Antonio Williams for Dutch Fork. And I said, you know, teams, a lot of teams just don't have guys that can stay with them. And they joked, they said, we'd have to put Tyler Smith back there. I would. If they make it that far, I'd absolutely do that. I mean, I hope they don't make it that far. I but hope if, they don't if, either. If you do, you, you just have to take your fastest guy. And there was that some, was their joke. We'd have to put Tyler Smith back there. There were some times some years ago when I was calling games for Union that Union would put Shy Smith in yeah. and, and tell him to stick their fastest guy because that's all they had. Gaffney's going to have to take a timeout. Yeah, they're going to have to take a timeout. They were getting – that play clock was winding down, so they use a timeout. Brought to you by Watchworks. We'll take a 30-second timeout. 2.46 to play in the first quarter. Third down and six. When we come back, this is Spartanburg Viking football. PC went 3-0 and in that tournament. How about that? I, it's predetermined who you play ahead of time. I don't know. They're 5-2, and two, man. Down and six for the Gaffney Indians from their own 35-yard line. Spartanburg on top, seven to nothing. Raheem Jeter found Andrew Danton for a 33-yard touchdown pass earlier this evening. And we're late in the first quarter. Gaffney had all this energy. They're fired up early. They've had a couple of big penalties that have brought some touchdowns back. Loftus in the shotgun, third down and six. They got to get to our 41. Four wide receivers. We show blitz on the left. Here we come. They pick it up nicely. Loft is going to try to step up. He'll take a shot. They got a man wide open. They catch it. They score a touchdown. Blown coverage, and there are no flags on the field this time. Absolutely blown coverage. Amazon Little John, his first career touchdown as a Gaffney Indian. Tyler, our corner, thought he had safety help, and there was nobody within 20 yards of Little John that time. No, Grayson Loft just did a good job of scrambling that time. And making that, extending that play, and Lil John's able to get open uh, down the sidelines, wide open, and, and walk in for a touchdown. Mm -mm -mm. Extra point coming up for Gaffney. And again, third down and seven. Loftus did an incredible job to extend that play, and just a blown assignment. Extra point is up, and it is good. 2.34 to play in the first quarter. We're all tied at seven. Buckle up. It's going to be a heavyweight battle tonight. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking football. Mm. Mm -hmm. I hate that. Wakefield Automotive Drive summary. Four plays, 80 yards for the Gaffney Indians. A 35-yard touchdown pass from Loftus to Amazon Little John. Ties this game at seven apiece, 234 to go in the first. Spartanburg Viking football is brought to you by Chris Foster Heating and Air. 809-4836, 809-4836 for my friend Chris Foster and Chris Foster Heating and Air. All our kicks are brought to you by Whit Bishop, attorney at law. This one's going to be fielded by Javaris Rice at the six. Coming up near side, a little stutter step at the 15. Ran into his own up back and will be stood up tall at the 17-yard line. So not good field position for the Vikings. Again, Viking football brought to you by Chris Foster. Heating and air. Tied at seven, 2.27 to go in the first quarter. Here comes the Viking offense for the third time today. We've had a three and out. We've had a touchdown drive. Got to bounce back. We gave up some touchdowns last week. Got to bounce right back. Let's go back to work. Raheem Jeter in the shotgun. Twins to either side. Dreek Carter to his left. Three down lineman for Gaffney. 
lot of space over here to the left. They really have that far side stacked up. Treat Carter goes right up the gut. They've got him, spin him forward to about the 20 for a gain of a couple. Brought down by Clay Putnam, six foot sophomore. Second down, about eight and a half here. On a cold night in Spartanburg County. Four wide receivers, two to the right, two to the left. Raheem in the shotgun, Dreek to his left. Same formation for the Vikings, same look for the Indians. Bullock's blitzing up the middle, Dreek picks it up. We swing it out right, it's caught by Quay Moore, and he'll cut it up the far sideline to the 31-yard line, and that's way more than we needed for a Vic Bailey Volkswagen Viking first down. Yeah, great job by Dreek there to pick up that blitz to keep um, give um, Raheem enough time to make that throw. Trips to the near side, ball on the far hash, one wide receiver up top. Jeter back to throw, will swing it out to Quay Moore again. Look out, he's blown up in the backfield, drops us for a loss. A loss of three back to the 28-yard line. Tyler, you see why Gaffney has so many tackles for a loss. They are very fast. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of those plays you, uh, you aren't going to run very many times on the Gaffney Indians because they're going to sniff it out, and they're going to be there to make that tackle every time. But when they go three down linemen, they can go two safeties every single time, something that Spring Valley and Ridgeview could not do against our offense. Jeter in the shotgun, four wide receivers, second down and 13. Raheem back to throw, backside screen, Danton's got it. Gets up to the 30, takes a big hit, bounces off of it, goes to the outside, now he cuts up to the 34-yard line before going down. Brought down by Tim McGill, it'll bring up third down and seven. Andrew Danton's a tough guy, he took a big hit there that would have leveled most of us, was able to spin out of it and get a few yards. It's his third catch tonight, including a 33-yard touchdown reception. 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Third down and seven for the Vikings. Raheem quickly to the line of scrimmage. Now he'll look over to Gray Ramsey, his quarterback coach. I don't know if anybody's ever been more proud of an individual than Gray Ramsey is of Raheem Jeter. Gray loves that kid. Third and seven. Four wide receivers, they're pressing their corners. Play action. Jeter, looking, looking. Takes a shot for Taheem Richardson. Come on, there thank you. They got there very early that time. Landon Bullock can argue all he wants to, but their corner popped Taheem in the back well before the ball got there. That'll be a 15-yard penalty and a Viking first down. Yeah, absolutely should be as he got there extremely early um, and pretty much tackled uh, our, our wide receiver before the ball could get there. So a great call by those referees to get that one and give the Vikings a fresh set of downs on the pass interference. And they will move this football. <laughs> All the way up to the 49-yard line. So first and 10 for the Vikings. 24 seconds to play in the first quarter. Twins to either side. What might be the last play of quarter number one. Cheater in the shotgun. Tyler, it's three down linemen and six Gaffney Indians straight across the 45-yard line. And then one safety. Dreek goes to the right, tries to break a tackle. He finally does, and he falls forward to the Gaffney 49 for a gain of two. And that will probably be the last play. As I see Gray look over, and he says, let's head over there. So that'll be the end of the first quarter. Your score, Spartanburg 7, Gaffney 7. We'll head to quarter number two when we come back in the Upper State Championship. This is Viking football. Hey, did you hear there's free tuition this year at Spartanburg Community College? That's right, no tuition. 
That means gen ed classes, healthcare classes, manufacturing classes, cybersecurity classes, they're all free. Visit SpartanburgCommunityCollege.com to apply. That's free too. Second down and eight for the Vikings at the Gaffney 49 yard line. Moving now from our left to right. Tied at seven as we begin quarter number two. Jeter in the shotgun. Three wide receivers, Langston Green in the ball game at tight end, trying to give an extra blocker in there. It's a play action. Raheem's going to take a shot over the middle, and that ball's going to be caught by Denton, who's brought down to the 25-yard line. Tyler, how did Raheem fit that ball through those defenders? I don't know. That, that scared the heck out of me when I saw him release that ball when I was looking to see uh, where it was going because there were, there were Gaffney Indians everywhere. But somehow he threads the needle and finds Danton again, huge. Gray Ramsey turned to Raheem and beat it on his chest. And I mean, just beat it on it after that pass. The wind has made its way into the Burrito Hub Studios. Jeter in the shotgun, dumps it out left and had to throw it away, Tyler, because they read that play perfectly. That was a very good read by their corner. And they read that, and Raheem saw that and just threw it away. Yeah, Raheem always has done a good job for the most part this year of of doing things like that, getting rid of the ball, getting it out of there, and making sure he puts it out of bounds where no one can get to it. But that was a great job by Raheem Jeter to see that and to get rid of that football. Second down and 10. Ball at the Gaffney 23-yard line. Four wide receivers, twins to either side. Gaffney showing blitz. Every time they've showed blitz, they've brought it. Looks like they're coming from both edges this time. Here they come. Raheem goes right up the middle. He's got a little hole to the left. Now he'll cut it back up to the 19-yard line. And honestly, Gaffney's lucky he didn't get any more than that. There was definitely a hole there, but Clay Putnam, the DN, made a great tackle. It's third and six. Really good play there by Putnam. Four wide receiver set, third down and six. We've got to get to just shy of their 13-yard line. Tied at seven. 11 minutes to go in the first half. 15 on the play clock. We got plenty of time, and Raheem looks calm. Dreek Carter to his right. Play action. Looking over the middle for Taheem Richardson. They'll get it to him at the seven. He'll try to split some defenders. He breaks one off, and he gets down to the five-yard line. Taheem Richardson with the grab. They'll give us the four. It'll be first and goal. Great job by Tahim to get back and, and find where where his quarterback was and look for that ball and call for it as he uh, broke off his route early and looked really good. Got there to the five yard line, pushed forward to the four. And it's first and goal. Two tight ends, Ian Squires and Langston Green will go two wide receivers. Jeter in the shotgun, Carter to his left. Raheem will give it to Drake. He goes right up the gut and he gets to about the two. About the two-yard line, Drink is down, maybe just shy of the one. Tyler, we've had an, an issue a couple of times going uh, with a heavy set, trying to find a way to get in the end zone, so we go a little bit bigger than we've even gone before. And there's some big boys up there right now. Let's see sure if number are. one keeps us. With. Second and goal, same formation again for the Vikings. Raheem will keep this one. He'll go left side, and he's in the end zone! Raheem Jeter goes all the way to the rocks in the back and holds the football high in the air as the Vikings take the lead 13-7 with an extra point coming up. Yep, that's, the, that's what you're looking for right there, and that's what we've been wanting him to do all year, and he's done it a few times as he gets in for his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Raheem Jeter taking this team on his back and wanting to lead them to Columbia. We have missed that this year, all year long. Extra point is up, and it is good. 9.48 to play in the first half. The Vikings respond to the Gaffney response. We lead 14 to seven. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking Football.
Wakefield Automotive Drive summary, 11 plays for the Spartanburg Vikings. They go 83 yards. Raheem Jeter punches it in from two yards out to give the Vikings a 14-7 lead with 9.48 to play in the second quarter. All our kicks brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Law, 101 Lafayette Street, downtown Spartanburg. Tyler, a lot of people thought this is going to be low scoring, but 14-7, 9.48 to go in the first half. These, these offenses, as the wind blows the football off, these offenses are trading punches right now. Again, all our kicks brought to you by Whit Bishop, attorney at law. Tyler, this time John Love is kicking with the wind. I want to point out that he put one seven yards deep last time against the wind. He gets a hold of this. This could go through the upright. That thing is high in the air. It's going to go about eight yards deep. And checked up. <laughs> That's <laughs> what's impressive. Checked up short of the back <laughs> of the end. How did he do that? You do that at the one, and they let it go, and it just sits there? That's so why he's going Ooh. to play. Big time Division One college football. The Virginia Tech Hokies. Who will his coach be? I don't know. We have stayed with four down linemen. Murph Epps has played a lot in this ball game. And Tyler, we're going with a 4-4 right now. And they have four wide receivers a lot of the time. And look at this. They've got three wide receivers here. But we are, we're going with the 4-4 right now. Loftus in the shotgun. They bring a man in motion to the right. Everybody's over there. They give it to Tyler Smith. He goes over there. They got a big hole over there, too. To the 35, to the 40, far side to the 50, cuts it back up, and he's going to score. They had a tremendous hole on the right side, and just like that, Gaffney is an extra point away from tying this up. What a block on the right edge. That was really well done. Sometimes, Tyler, you just tip your cap. That was a tip your cap block. Goodness me. They put everybody over there. And we didn't have enough guys over there. And they just, they laid a big hole for Tyler Smith, who scored again his 27th rushing touchdown this season. And the extra point is up and good. And we're tied at 14. 9.34 to play in the first half. <laughs> who, who had 49-42 as the final tonight? <laughs> You're listening to Spartanburg Viking football. Woo. Buckle up, dude. Wakefield Automotive Drive summary for the Gaffney Indians. One play, 80-yard run by Tyler Smith. Ties the game at 14 apiece, 9.34 to go in the second quarter. In the lower state championship, Dutch Fork leads Fort Dorchester 14 to nothing. Don't know what quarter that's in. Try to get that updated. Gaffney kicking off from our right to left. All our kicks this year brought to you by Wynn Bishop, attorney at law. A.J. Hames to kick this off. Tied at 14. Three steps and a kick all the way down to the 10 yard line. And we throw it across the field, Tyler, to the 15. We got a block. We got a lot of room to the 30. Near side by 40. Try to cut it up to the 50 and down to the 37 yard line. Javaris Rice. Woo -hoo -hoo! The old Gamecock Brandon Bennett pass. to Reggie Richardson. It was J.D. Lawson to Javaris Rice to the 38-yard line. Tyler, he wanted to Impressive. cut it back up. If he could have, he could have scored. Goodness me. Trips to the left. One wide receiver near side ball at the Gaffney 38-yard line. What a ball game so far. We're still early in the first half. They show blitz off the left edge. Raheem points it out. 
Here they come. Raheem play action. Looking, looking. He's got to get rid of it. He does. He takes a shot, and it's out of bounds. Street Carter was the intended target. Raheem took a big hit that time from Philip Wade, but it's incomplete. It'll bring up second and ten. Tyler, how about Hodge going into the book of tricks? Hey, you got to do what you got to do at this point. You want to uh, keep Gaffney on their toes. Coach Hodge told me this week, he said, we're going to work on some special team stuff Thursday. I bet that was it. Here's a handoff to Drake Carter right up the middle, explodes, and he's hitting knocked down at the 33-yard line for a gain of five. It'll be third and five, and Tyler, you got to figure we're in four-down territory, especially after that trick play. Yeah, and you don't want to waste that here. A great starting field position. You got to punch this in. Under nine to play in the first half. Tied at 14 on the Impex pre-owned scoreboard. Raheem in the shotgun. We'll go five wide receivers this time. Gina looks like he's gonna run it. And he does right up the middle and he's hit and he's pulling and he's pulling and he's pulling to the 30. And he'll go down there at the 30 yard line and it'll bring up fourth down and two. And Tyler, that was a third down call knowing that we're gonna go for it on fourth down. But we're not. But we're not. That's John Love. Hmm. Interesting. You do have the wind at your back here. And the ball's right at the middle of the field. Mm. This would be a 47-yard kick. John Love for the lead for the Spartanburg Vikings with 8.07 to go in the first half. Tyler, are we trying to draw them off sides? Yeah, we did just that. Nope. We kick it away. And the kick has got plenty of distance. And it's right through there. And it is good. So John Love gives Spartanburg the lead, 17-14, with 7.54 left to go in the first half. We'll take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking Football. Wakefield Automotive Drive summary for the Vikings. Three plays ends with a John Love 47-yard field goal. Vikings lead 17-14, 7.54 to go in the second. All our kicks are brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Law, 101 Lafayette Street, downtown Spartanburg. Tyler, it's disappointing because we had that trick play that we ran that worked on a kick return. But at the same time, could have easily done a normal kick return and go up three and out, got no points. That's right. That's correct. And we've got to see something on defense here. Defense is going to have to change something up. Uh, the four down lineman doesn't seem to be working. They're getting everything to the outside, and, and it's beating us right now. John Love booms this one into the end zone, no problem. I think check up again. Yes, it's checked it up again. How does he do that? How does he do that? Tyler, you're right. Teams have not been able to run on the outside against us a lot this year. But they are right now. And Tyler, I think we have. We've, we've gone back to the 3-4 here. Yeah, that, that's worked for you all season long. I know you want to stop that Gaffney run. Uh, but they're getting everything to the outside now, and it's beating you. So you got to put some extra pokes out there. Javier Watson into the game at safety. So here they go. They hand it off right up the middle, trying to get to the right. Not much there. Maybe a gain of one. Ian Squires and Duncan Dawkins, the two DNs, come together to make the stop. See, it worked perfectly. That's it. Simple as that. Tyler Smith <laughs> with a gain of one. How good is that senior? I mean, let's, let's give credit where credit is due with that young man. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. I sure would love to see him fumble one right here. I would, too. Little John fumbled earlier in the game. Another fantastic senior running back. Second down and nine. Loftus back to throw under pressure. He'll go to the right, and he'll just throw it away. Tyler, we look more comfortable with these two plays than we have at any point. I mean, this is what we've been in all year. This has been the base defense. This is what these guys are used to. And Judah McGypsy able to apply some pressure right there and make Loftus have to throw this thing away. Got him in a third and long situation. This doesn't mean a whole lot for them. Because Tyler Smith can break one from anywhere. Viking fans coming to their feet. What a three and out this would be with 7-11 to play in the first half. Leading by three. 
Viking fans making a lot of noise below us. This place is packed tonight. Four wide receivers, trips to the near side, and what do we got? Do we have a, we have a flag? Uh-oh, did we jump off sides, Tyler? Did we jump off sides? I don't like how we're walking backwards. I don't like how we're walking backwards. Come on! Golly, Moses. Third and nine goes to third and four. Mm. Man. You finally get them third and long for the first time tonight. We jump off sides. Third and four. Loftus in the shotgun. Play action looking left. Backside screen caught underneath. They got some blockers. They have the first down and a little more past the 35. And we finally bring Jadarius Little John down at the 39 yard line. Jacob Madison brings him down. Tyler, they had the blockers there nicely done. Oh, yeah, they did. They, that was a well designed, well executed play from the Gaffney Indians. Not a whole lot you can do there. I, that looked to me like they were going to call the same play third and nine, 30, third and four. And honestly, they'd have picked it up either way. Four down linemen, I mean, three down linemen for Spartanburg, four wide receivers for Gaffney. First and 10 at our 39 yard line. Grayson back to throw, looking right now, looking left, and it's too high that time. Intended for Jaden Tate, the senior wide receiver at the Spartanburg 45. It's incomplete. That's the first one from Grayson that's gotten away. Tyler, one thing I've noticed from week zero to now, looking at my notes after the game last time, Grayson's got a lot more zip on his ball than he did in week zero. Yeah, he really does. And you know, it was his first game with the, with the Gaffney Indians last time out too. We show blitz from everywhere on this second and 10. He's definitely grown a lot as well as the junior quarterback. He sure has. Tyler Smith's the tailback. We show blitz, here we come off the edge. They swing it out to Tyler Smith. We got bodies over there though this time and he'll get to the line of scrimmage and maybe the 41 and that's gonna be it. Judah McJimsey with the tackle. And it'll bring up third and eight. It helped a lot not being with the four down linemen, having those extra bodies over there uh, to make that tackle. He's not an easy guy to tackle. Harder to catch. Here we go again. Third down and eight. Trips to the near side. Viking fans to their feet. There is one on one coverage on the far side of the field. We have nobody over there. And now we slide over and double team him. Grayson looking left side, it's a quick hitch. Caught by Amazon Little John at the 45, but that's gonna be it. He's gonna be four yards shy. In fact, I beg your pardon, that's Jadarius Little John. Easy to get them mixed up. And it'll bring up fourth down and four at their own 45. And Dan Jones looks like very reluctantly sends his punt team out on the field. I was about to say, that guy running out right there has gotta be a punter. That's a great job by the Smartbrook defense. Made some adjustments. Looks like they may have come up with a stop, going to force the punt. It's A.J. Hames back on his own 32. Tyler, you can't run into the kicker no, here. No. Tyler, they've got they've got 12 guys on the field. And we they got it. They've got 12 guys on the field. We call a fair catch at the 32. They ran two guys on late because they had 10 guys on the field. They ran two on late. The ball's at the 32-yard line. We call it the fair catch. If we can't add on to that, I'm not sure. I'd probably decline. I'd probably decline it and just say, no, we'll take the ball at the 32 with 502 to play in a three-point lead in the first half. Now, again, is that a five or a 15? The five, I believe. They're going to come over and talk to Mark Hodge about this right now. Oh, yeah, unforced error there. And I, I, think, think, I think they told him he could add it on. Let's see. Legal, Legal substitution, yep. yeah. And we'll take it on At the return. The yep, okay, all day. Wonderful. All day, sounds good to us. Great job by the defense. I mean, outstanding job. And uh, Tyler, you called it, going back to three down linemen looked a lot more comfortable for our guys. Yeah, it did, I mean, but that's what you're used to. That's what you're used to. And a great job by the coaches have to recognize that the four down lineman wasn't working. Let's move back to what we know and let's get back at this thing. And a great job. Well, I'm comfortable taking my children to Prisma Health. Prisma Health Orthopedics have 65 specialists and six locations in Spartanburg to better serve you. 502 left to play in the first half. We lead by three. Raheem Jeter in the shotgun with Dreek Carter to his left. Trips to the far side of the field, ball the near hash. They show blitz. 
with Philip Wade. Here they come. We pick it up. We throw it over the middle. It's caught at the 45 50 into Gaffney territory to the 40. It's Quay Moore who's all the way down to the Gaffney 34 yard line. A gain of about 23 yards in a Vic Bailey Volkswagen Viking first down. Yeah, just found him right over the middle there. Had plenty of time to throw. The offensive line held up good. Uh, made that great throw to Quay Moore. And big pickup. We're in business again. Twins to either side. Raheem Jeter in the shotgun. We lead by three, heading straight towards the high school. Gray Ramsey changes up the play here. They show blitz on the far side. Raheem sees it. Little play action, he'll step up, gonna take a shot over the middle, it's caught, Taheem Richardson, and he's gonna score! He's gonna score! Touchdown, Vikings! Raheem Jeter to Taheem Richardson! A 34-yard touchdown strike! The ninth touchdown reception of the year for Taheem Richardson. And the Vikings lead 23-14 with an extra point coming up. Wow. Extra point by John Love is up. And it is good with 4.17 to play in the first half. The Vikings just simply aren't we are being stopped right now. We lead by 10. We'll take a 30 second timeout. This is Viking football. Wakefield Automotive Drive summary there. Two plays, 63 yards, a 34-yard touchdown pass from Raheem Jeter to Taheem Richardson. And it's a 10-point advantage for the Spartanburg Vikings, 24-14, 4-17 left to go in the second quarter. All our kicks brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Law. 101 Lafayette Street, downtown Spartanburg. This Gaffney team's not going to go away, though. They were down 10 almost the whole game last week to uh, Northwest. Ball falls off the tee. Tyler, you're right. I mean, this, this Gaffney team is experienced. They're smart. They're incredibly well coached. I mean, for goodness sakes, Chris Miller's their linebackers coach. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the greatest coaches in this state's history, and he's their linebackers coach, for goodness sakes. J.D. Lawson's got to hold it on a tee here. Hey, man, does he have some talent right there at that position? Good. <laughs> Night alive does. I mean, it, listen, make no mistake, as John Love will boom this into the end zone for another touchback. Listen, make no mistake, their linebacker play has shot way up with Chris Miller as their, as their no, linebacker coach. No question. Good. When Nine you used to line. talk about Gaffney, you talked about their defensive line, but now the story has been their linebackers. It's unbelievable. And I know it didn't end well, but make no mistake, Spartanburg loves Chris Miller. Here we go. They need to get Ken Littlejohn going, and we got to be wary of that. He's back in the ball game along with Tyler Smith in the backfield. Three wide receivers. First and ten, they'll play fake it, dump it off to Littlejohn. He dropped it, it's incomplete. He dropped it in the backfield because J.D. Lawson was going to pop him for a loss. In fact, they're lucky he didn't hang on to that. What a read by J.D. Second and ten. J.D. Lawson has really improved this season. I mean, he's, he's turned into a really, really great player for the Vikings. He's got 114 tackles. <laughs> he's turned into a really, really good player. Remember the game he had to kick the extra points? Yes. That was impressive. 11 pass breakups, three interceptions on the year. I mean, are you kidding me? What a year J.D. Lawson has had. Four wide receivers, two to either side. Grayson back to throw. They'll sling it out right. Going to be caught at far sideline at, at the 23. And a little stiff arm there by Jadarius Littlejohn. Be marked out of bounds at the 28. Third down and two with 4.04 to play in the first half. We were way off Littlejohn that time. Tyler, they just took the yards that were given to him. 
Third down and two. Three down lineman for Spartanburg. Tyler, we're in a 3-2-6 right here. And we're showing blitz off the far side. Tyler, we have no safety help over here. None whatsoever. And they'll sling it out quickly. It's caught by Jadarius Littlejohn, and he'll lower his shoulder and get into the 36-yard line. Tyler, if we are giving them yards, they are taking it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's been the calling card for this Gaffney team really all season long is just to take what defenses give you. They've taken no shots down the field except one play on a busted coverage. Four wide receivers. Trips to the far side, ball on the near hash. Grayson in the shotgun, up back to his right. They turn, they fake it to him. Loftus is going to try to keep this. He's got a good block on the edge. He'll dive face first to the 41-yard line for a gain of five. Tyler, for half a second, I thought J.D. Lawson ran into the official, but then I looked up, and it was uh, it, it was Amazon Littlejohn with a good block. Their wide receiver blocking is outstanding. Really good. It's outstanding. Three wide receiver set. Second down and five. They hand it off to Ken Littlejohn trying to go right. He'll cut it back, break out of a tackle, get past Judah McGypsy down to the 48-yard line. Tough running by Ken Littlejohn. Gives us a Gaffney first down. Those are some words you haven't said too many times. He got past Judah McGypsy. Yeah, I mean, listen, Ken Littlejohn's tough. And I know he had that fumble earlier, but they're going right back to him. And he made a great run there for another Gaffney first down. Under three to play in the first half. We lead by 10. Gaffney gets the ball to start the second half. Here's a sweep to Little John to the left. There's nothing there. He'll cut it back right where there may be a little something there. He'll lower his shoulder and get to the 50 and then spin out of it and get to the R48 for a gain of four. He did a whole lot wow. of running for those four yards, though. Judah McGypsy was there to bring him down. A gain of four, second and six. Gaffney would love to eat up every second of this clock and get into the end zone. Deshaun Davis sliding out to cover Edward Jeffries on the far side of the field. We're double teaming Edward Jeffries, Tyler. Just simply double teaming that young man. Three wide receivers. Loft is back to throw. Looking, looking, they're gonna take a shot. He was hit right when he threw it and the ball went flying out of his arm. They had a guy underneath. It was Little John, it's incomplete. I think he was gonna throw it to Jeffries though way down the field. And he got hit when he threw it and it went sailing out of bounds all funny, second and 10. Good job getting some pressure back there and keeping him from doing what he wanted to do. I said second and 10, that's not right at all. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's third down and six. Loftus in the shotgun. Three wide receivers, they got to get to our 42-yard line. 2.02 to play in the first half. We show blitz off the edge, here we come. They sling it out, it's caught. Tyler, they got a first down. Third and six, and we gave them about 12 yards. Yeah. Not so sure about that, Tyler. Goodness gracious, and that is Edward Jeffries with the catch, their leading receiver. First and 10 at the 39, and it just, he just ran a six-yard hook route and nobody was near him on a third down and six. First and 10 for Gaffney, 157 to play in the first half. They hand it off to Little John trying to get right. We've got two guys there, and we bring them down just shy of the 36 for a gain of about two and a half. Nice job by Benji Little John to get in the backfield and redirect where that play was going. Coming up, the Cliff Bear State Farm halftime report. We'll have some first half highlights and some scores from around the state, including between Dutch Fork and Fort Dorchester. That's all the Cliff Bear State Farm Halftime Report. Three wide receivers play action. Loftus under pressure, takes a shot, and he just threw that one away. That ball came out of his hand all kind of funny. Gaffney's fans wanted pass interference, but Loftus threw it about eight yards out of bounds. Here's the problem on that play, and I know why Gaffney's upset because it was contact. It was a play action, and their wide receiver went and laid a block on our corner. Right. And and so there was a ton of contact, and the ball's thrown that way, and everybody's going pass interference. The problem was it was Edward Jeffries who went up and laid a block on our corner like it was a run play. Not to mention it was thrown about eight yards out of bounds. Yes. Third down and eight. Can we stop him here? Loft is back to throw. Over the middle, and that is incomplete. They're going to throw a flag. And they should. And they should. We were just a little bit early. We didn't 
need to be. It was not a good throw, but a 15-yard pass interference is going to move this down to the Viking 24-yard line. And Tyler, here's what I think happened on that play too. And I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but the throw was so bad, the receiver stopped running and our corner ran right into him. Yeah. And so it was pass interference. If it's a good throw, it's a catch. But he stopped, looked back, and our corner smashed right into him. I'm not real sure what else we could do. For some reason, they put this inside the 23. I have no idea why. Four wide receivers. Grayson Loft is back to throw. He steps up in the pocket. He'll take a shot. They got a man wide open. It's a touchdown. That is the second time today we have had complete busted coverage down the field. And I'm going to tell you what, Tyler, the most improved player for Gaffney right now is Grayson Loftus. That kid can throw the football. He really can. And we've seen him throw a couple of really good passes tonight. He's thrown some bad ones, but he's thrown some really good ones too. I mean, that thing was And that was real one pretty. of the good ones. And that's a great route. It's 24 to 20 with an extra point coming up, 113 to play. We have all three timeouts, and the extra point is up and good. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Vikings lead by three. Let's see if we can add on to this before we get to the half. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking Football. All right, I want you to go out there. I want you to dump this whole thing out to that sink, and I want you to refill it in that little water thing that you stick under and fill it up with that. Wakefield Automotive Drive summary for the Gaffney Indians. 12 plays, 80 yards, a 23-yard touchdown pass. Makes it 24-21. Three-point lead for Spartanburg, 113 to go in the half. Tyler, Gaffney and Northwestern. It was 13 or 16 to 13 in overtime last week. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's 24-21 here in the first half. Goodness night. All our kicks are brought to you by Wynn Bishop Attorney at Law. Your brother has found the local buffet and brought it in here. A.J. Haynes set to kick this off. High kick, going to be fielded around the 10-yard line. Javaris Rice will bring it up to the 15, try to get a hold of the 20. He does to the 30, gets past the 35, breaks a tackle, trying to get outside. He does to the 40, and he's slung down to the 42-yard line with 103 to play in the first half. A great return by Javaris Rice. Gives the Vikings a chance. You need to give Burgar a chance. Downtown Spartanburg, so many great burgers to choose from. Go by and check out our friends at Burgar, downtown Spartanburg. Got all three timeouts in good field position. Try to add to the score right here. 24-21 Spartanburg. Boy, it feels like we've played five quarters already. Jeter in the shotgun. Four wide receivers. Two stacked on top of each other to the near side. Ball on the near hash. Raheem back to throw. They blitz. We pick it up. Raheem over the middle. That ball's caught at the 40 and taking a big hit is Jay Staggs. He'll make the grab down to the 37-yard line. 34th catch of the year for Jay Staggs, the senior. And a Vic Bailey Volkswagen Viking first down. Quickly we go. 50 seconds to play at the 38-yard line. First and 10, Raheem in the shotgun. They blitz up the middle, we pick it up. Raheem back to throw. He'll chuck it out right. It's gonna be incomplete. Falls short of Taheem Richardson. He was under heavy pressure and the clock will stop with 39 seconds to go in the first half. It's second and 10 from there, 37. Tyler, you take any points you can get here. Oh, absolutely. Anything. Even if it's a field goal, that's fine. You just want something here because they get the ball to start the second half. Love to get it in the end zone. Though. Love to get it in the end zone right here. Raheem Jeter in the shotgun, four wide receivers. 39 seconds to play from our own, from their 37-yard line, I beg your pardon. They show blitz with Jesus Dowdle off the near side. Here he comes. Brandon picks him up. Jeter steps up, fires it out, caught at the 24 and out of bounds is Taheem Richardson to the 23-yard line for a Vic Bailey Volkswagen Viking first down. And even better, got out of bounds, stopped the clock, saved those timeouts. Still have all three timeouts. Down to the 27. Clock stops with 32 seconds left. 
plenty of time. Tyler, the, we've got three timeouts at 32 seconds. You could even run it here with Drew Carter. Absolutely. And Langston Green's going to come in. Jay Staggs is going to come out. 20 on the play clock. Still plenty of time to get organized. Quay Moore will go to the left. Langston Green, the tight end. So three wide receiver look. Jeter in the shotgun. We lead by three. Ball at the Gaffney, 23. They show blitz off both edges. Very low snap play action. Raheem's got to get rid of it. He's not going to. He's sacked back at the 29-yard line. And we got to call a timeout, don't we? And we do. We finally do with 21 seconds left. They'll stop it with 20 seconds left. And it'll bring up second down and 16. All our timeouts are brought to you by Watchworks. You need a great gift idea for Christmas? You need to go see our friends at Watchworks, 1040 Fernwood, Glendale Road. All right, Tyler, second down and 17. You're within John Love's range still at this point. He made a 47-yarder earlier. This would be a 46. Obviously, we're not kicking it here. You just want to make sure you don't go backwards anymore. Yeah, you can't go backwards from here. You're going to try to throw it down. Uh, love to be able to pick up a first down here and then have a couple of shots at the end zone. I would love to run it with Dreek right here, right up the gut, call another timeout, and maybe take one shot at the end zone. Something like that, be real smart here. Coach Hodge was a little particular with the clock there. So here we go, 24-21 on the Impex pre-owned scoreboard. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Spartanburg 24, Gaffney 21. The Cliff Gobert State Farm halftime report will be coming up. Three wide receivers to the left, one wide receiver down here. It's Taheem Richardson. Do you take a shot, Tyler, with Taheem? Yeah, if he's one on one. Second down and 16. Clay Cock is at 16, got plenty of time. They show blitz off the edge on both edges. Raheem points it out. And here they come, play action. Raheem's gonna take a shot down the middle of the field. They got two guys down there and they pick it off. Oh, they pick it off in the end zone. It is an interception and a touchback and you hate that because that's points off the board. We ran three guys down towards the end zone and Raheem just threw it up down there. And that's an interception. And it looks like that was Marquise Bradley who picked that one off. Yeah, he definitely didn't want that. We want to be able to get some points right there before they have 13 seconds left to go in the first half. Tyler, you got to be real careful here because we see how explosive they are. I mean, they could, they could score real fast. They have all three timeouts. I just, I would have loved to see us try a run play right there with, with those timeouts. They go pistol formation and they'll just take a knee and they'll head to the locker room and we will with a three point lead. 24 21 Spartanburg. Gaffney will have it on the other side of the Cliff Gobert State Farm halftime report. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking football. All right. Let's see. If we have this. Loftus calls for it. He'll give it to Little John. He'll stretch it out. Left. Squires had him. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, I want, I want that. I want the Madison fumble recovery. Fourth down and nine. Cheater in the shotgun, back to throw, looking over the middle, has got Davis caught at the 17, he breaks the tackle, 10, 5, touchdown, Vikings! All right, obviously I want that one. Uh, with a second and goal, same formation again for the Vikings. Raheem will keep this one, he'll go left side, and he's in the end zone! Raheem Jeter goes all the way to the rocks in the back. I want that one. You do the field goal. They show blitz on the far side. Raheem sees it. A little play action. He'll step up. Going to take a shot over the middle. It's caught. Tahir Richardson. And he's going to score. He's going to score. Touchdown, Vikings. All right, so we'll do those four. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. 
hate that pick. I hate that pick. I'm a man, I'm a man. You're a man, I'm a man. You're a man, I'm a Oh. Oh, God. Oh, my hips. He didn't bring me no fruit. No, there's a bunch of people here, period. I see you can pay for He lives in Blacksburg now. Long way to go. That was a good first half. I'm Very tired. good. Where's my fruit? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I let you have my steak. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm good. I don't like fruit. <laughs> I like it all right. Huh? Oh, yeah. Go get me one. Okay. <laughs> Tempt me with a good time. Twenty four twenty one Spartanburg leads Gaffney in the upper state championship. Welcome in to the Cliff Go Bears State Farm halftime report live from Viking Stadium. I'm Ryan Cleary to tell you how we got there. Here's Tyler Sugar. The Vikings started the game with the football went three and out punted it away to Gaffney. Gaffney was melting a heck of a drive. And then Jacob Madison said, no, nah, we're good. <laughs> Loftus calls for it. He'll give it to Little John. He'll stretch it out left. Squires had him. Oh, 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 oh. The Vikings would take advantage of that turnover by the Gaffney Indians, marching 10 plays down the field, 62 yards. And Raheem Jeter found his buddy, Andrew Dent. Fourth down and nine. Jeter in the shotgun, back to throw, looking over the middle. He's got Dan, caught at the 17, breaks the tackle. 10, 5, That gave the Vikings a 7-0 lead. Gaffney would answer on their next drive, going four plays, 80 yards. A 35-yard touchdown pass from Loftus to Amazon. Little John tied it up at 7. The Vikings would take the lead on the next drive, going 11 plays, 83 yards. This time, Raheem Jeter did it by himself. Second and goal. Same formation again for the Vikings. Raheem will keep this one. He'll go left side, and he's in the end zone. Raheem Jeter goes all the way to the rocks in the back and holds the football high in the air as the Vikings take the lead 13-7 with an extra point coming up. Extra point was good, made it 14-7 in favor of the Vikings. Gaffney would answer on the next play, going one play, 80 yards. Tyler Smith ties it up at 14. The, the Vikings would get the ball back, go three plays, a trick play on the kickoff, uh, set the Vikings up in good field, field position, three plays, and then uh, John Love kicked a 47-yard field goal. They made it 17-14. Great kick, by the way. Gaffney would get the ball. They would punt it away uh, to Spartanburg, and Spartanburg would go down two plays, 63 yards, and again, it was Jeter to Richardson. They show blitz on the far side. Raheem sees it. Little play action. He'll step up. Going to take a shot over the middle. It's caught to Raheem Richardson. And he's going to score. He's going to score. Touchdown, Vikings. Raheem Jeter to Taheem Richardson. Made it 24 to 14 in favor of the Vikings. Gaffney would answer 12 plays, 80 yards, a 23-yard touchdown pass by Loftus. Made it 24-21. Vikings would get it back, drive down the field, throw an interception in the end zone. Gaffney comes out, takes a knee, and takes us to the half where it is 24-21 Vikings 
at the halftime break. Grace Presbyterian Church now meets at the Chapman Cultural Center. If you can't make it, check out their website, gracepartburg.com. They also live stream their service on their Facebook page. We'll take a break in the Cliff Bears State Farm Halftime Report. Alex and Mitch will let you know what's going on around the state, including in the lower state championship between Dutch Fork and Fort Dorchester. That's next. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking Football. Three minutes.
back in the Cliff Bear State Farm Halftime Report. Let's get you some first half stats brought to you by Kapasi Glass. Spartanburg, uh, 194 yards through the air, just 28 on the ground for the Gaffney Indians, 151 through the air and 110 on the ground. For the Spartanburg Vikings, Raheem Jeter, five, uh, I beg your pardon, eight carries for five yards. Uh, Dreek Carter has nine carries for 25 yards. Uh, Raheem Jeter, 12 of 16 for one touchdown. Uh, I beg your pardon, a couple touchdowns and a one interception for 194 yards through the air. Taheem Richardson, three catches for 63 yards and a touchdown. Quay Moore has three for 37. Jay Staggs, one for 20. Andrew Danton, four catches for 73 yards and a touchdown. For the Gaffney Indians, Grayson Loftus is 11 for 16. A couple of touchdowns and 151 yards through the air. Tyler Smith has a catch for 22. Jadarius Littlejohn, five for 37. Amazon Littlejohn, two for 68 and a touchdown. And Edwards Jeffrey, Edward Jeffries has three for 24. I think all three of those are for first downs. Tyler Smith, five carries, 104 yards and a touchdown. Wow. Tyler Smith, welcome back in to the Cliff Bear State Farm Halftime Report. You know, I was thinking for a second, it's really funny. It was Coach Miller who designed the 18 steps from locker room to turf for Spartanburg, mm -hmm. and he made it on purpose where there weren't steps straight to their locker room. It was his design to make the team walk that long way, and he's the one that his team has to do it right now. It's just funny how that comes full circle. It is, and it's been a great football game here in the first half. Hopefully it stays like that in the second half, and shout out to the people in the lower level that were listening to us during the halftime break. Yeah, big shout out to you guys. Oh, we kept you entertained. I hope we did keep you entertained. I really do. Uh, it is freezing outside. Make no mistake. Tyler, do you think the weather is affecting anything right now in this ballgame? Uh, it doesn't really look like it has a whole lot. I mean, a lot of times when it's cold, you see a lot of drops and and uh, mistakes. But it hadn't been that way. This, these two teams are playing good football um, offensively, which is kind of really not what we expected from uh, Gaffney a whole lot. They've been in a lot of defensive struggles this year. But like I said in the pregame, they find ways to win football games. They can win in a, in a variety of ways. And uh, we're going to have to keep our foot on the gas here because, you know, we're up three at the half. They get the ball. This is going to be a good second half. We were up by 10, and they went down and scored and then picked off a pass in our end zone. That's a big sway of four minutes there, Tyler. Need to get a stop here. And you pointed out we switched from four down linemen to three down linemen. And that certainly worked. Don't you think Gaffney then is going to start trying to run up the middle? Because when we had four down linemen, they weren't running up the middle at all. That's the point. You go three down linemen, the holes are supposed to be there in the middle. Don't we think Gaffney's going to try to start doing that a little bit? Oh, they absolutely should. And that, you know, that made me and we had to bring Judah and some of those guys up a little bit uh, to try to prevent that from happening. But so far, even after we switched to the three down linemen, they didn't go that way. They still <laughs> kept trying to get it to the outside a little bit. And they've thrown the ball a lot more than I thought they would this year, I mean, this week. It was a four. 4-4 right. that we were running. We switched to a 3-4 and brought in Javier Watson. It does look like Micah Harris is not going after getting hurt last week. He was, uh, we were going to see if he could give it a go. He did not. Tyler, we're doing a lot of things really well. And I, I was just talking to the Gaffney radio folks. He goes, it's like playing a completely different team than what they saw in week zero. And that's very true. Uh, we're certainly playing good football. We've got 24 minutes to go. We lead by three, but they get the football first and a right for, to play for the state championship. Tyler, everything we have fought for, everything we have wanted is right here. What do we have to do to try to pull this out? we got to come up with some stops on defense. They're getting some big plays. We've had some busted coverages that have led to two touchdowns. we got to fix that. we got to keep doing what we're doing on offense and, and not make mistakes. We've done a good job. We did make the mistake there at the end, the interception uh, that pretty much ended the half. Uh, we've got to limit that stuff. Can't be making mistakes because this Gaffney football team will take advantage of those mistakes. Gaffney heading over to their sideline. Spartanburg ready to go down here to our near sideline. Second half as that wraps up the Cliff Gobert State Farm Halftime Report. Hey, tomorrow morning, celebrate a Viking win or... Again, don't want to think about it, but celebrate a Viking season if that comes up. But no, let's celebrate no, a Viking win. win tomorrow morning at the Beacon Drive-In. John B. White Senior Boulevard with a big old plate of hash browns. The biggest breakfast menu around is at the Beacon. John B. White Senior Boulevard. Well, Tyler, thousands and thousands of folks here. And the millions watching around the world. I mean, you, you could argue here we're, we're probably around 10,000. 
Oh, man, there's a ton of people here, a bunch of people on this side, a ton of people across the way uh, that made the way over from Gaffney, and we appreciate everybody that showed up. We appreciate all the folks that are listening to the bunches and bunches of people that we know are listening online uh, right now. So we appreciate each and every one of you for listening, and we're ready to get this second half started. John Love to kick it off from our right to left. All our kicks brought to you by Whit Bishop, attorney at law, kicking against the wind, although it's really died down here at the moment. As this one's going to be returned, Tyler. This is going to be returned and dropped at the two. They pick it up at the five. We're down there in a hurry, and they run into a Viking at the 34-yard, the 14-yard line, and we sling them down. It's rare that John Love doesn't kick it through the end zone, but uh, that one worked out pretty good for the Vikings right there. So here comes Grayson Loftus. It is Spartanburg 24, Gaffney 21. So much happened in that first half. I've gone to my backside of my sheet here for the first time all year. Wow. That's different. Four wide receivers. First and 10 for Gaffney from their own 14. Loftus will sling it out to their back. Tyler Smith cutting up 15. He's tripped up around the 18-yard line. It'll be Jacob Madison who brings him down for a gain of four to bring up second and six. And they really marked that Tyler at the 15 for some reason. I have no idea why. So it's really a gain of three, second and seven. Just trying to get him the ball out in space because he can run. Really oh, can he ever. Three down linemen for Spartanburg. Loftus back to throw. They'll sling it out to Smith and he dropped it. Dropped it in the backfield. And it is incomplete. It was a forward pass by about a yard. And it'll bring up third down and seven. Tyler, how big would a three and out be here? My goodness. It'd be really big for the Spartanburg defense to do that. Get the offense who's been fantastic tonight back out on the field. Tyler, we are not getting a lot of pressure. And it almost looks like we're not trying to because they get rid of it so quickly. Third down and seven. A lot of guys staying at home. They really are. We're in a dime package here. Loftus back to throw. Steps up in the pocket under pressure. Get him, get him, get him. We got him, we got him, we got him. Yes, sir. We sack him. It's Ian Squires. Drops him at the 10 yard line, fourth and 15, and Gaffney will have to punt it away. And you can't ask for a much better start than that from the Spartanburg defense. Uh, to get back there and finally get to Grayson Loftus and put him on the ground, Ian Squires, uh, with his first sack of the season. Is that right? Wow. Yeah, I think so. He's got a couple tackles for a loss, but that's his first sack. Big sack. A.J. Hames, five yards deep in his own end zone. Shank it. Danton on the 50. Good snap. Gets it away. Low kick. Danton's going to get, get away from it. It'll take a sideways roll to the Gaffney 44-yard line. We want to thank Wakefield Automotive. Jay Wakefield, we appreciate you and your continued support of Spartanburg Viking football. Uh, go by and check out Wakefield Automotive downtown Spartanburg. Tyler, perfect start. Yeah, perfect start for the defense, a three and out now. If you can get your offense to go down and put some points on the board, we want a touchdown right here. Let's score and put this back at a 10-point game. Great field position for the Vikings, 10-27 to go in the third quarter. Raheem Jeter in the shotgun, ball on the near hash. Three wide receivers up top. Quay Moore down here by his lonesome. They've got three down linemen. They show pressure off the edge. Every time they do this, they brought pressure tonight. Man comes in motion. It's Jay Staggs. Raheem back to throw. He'll swing it out to Dreek Carter. Look out, Dreek. He makes the first guy miss on a nice cut. He's grabbed from behind and still gets up to the 39-yard line. Philip Wade. Tyler got beat on the play, but he came back and made the tackle. Good play by the senior linebacker. Yeah, and Drake Carter with the Madden style juke move yep. there, looking good and picking up some big yardage on first down. Second down and five at the Gaffney 39. Raheem in the shotgun. Trips to the left, one wide receiver up top. Again, Brayshawn Little John looks like he's going to blitz. Look like they're going to blitz off that edge, too. They back off. Here comes Brayshawn. They do blitz. Dreek picks it up. Raheem's going to take a shot to the far sideline. It's overthrown, intended for Andrew Danton. And it bring up third down and five.
So third and five from the Gaffney 39 yard line. Raheem Jeter in the shotgun, four wide receivers, two to either side. We're three of five, or three of six, I beg your pardon, on third down tonight. They pick up the blitz nicely. Raheem steps up in the pocket. He throws it high, but it's caught at the 31-yard line, and that's Quay Moore, the junior sky, to make that grab. And a McBailey Volkswagen Viking first down. Yeah, that throw was a little high, and you're right. He went up, climbed the ladder, and got to it. Good pick up on third and five to pick up that first down. Raheem could have also run for that, Tyler. They blitzed. He stepped up. He had a lot of room, but he found Quay Moore. The juniors had a good day. Four wide receivers trips to the near side. Here's a run with Dreek Carter. We haven't run it a lot lately. He goes up the middle, pinballs off one up to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. Yeah, I like him picking up five yards on first down and making it a second manageable. It's good stuff. It's 40 catches on the year now for Quay Moore. Great season by the junior. Let's see if we run it again right here, Tyler, on this play. Second down and five. They're showing blitz off both edges. Here they come. Raheem's got to get rid of it. We do, and it's bobbled, dropped, broken up. I don't know. There were like six hands in there intended for Taheem Richardson, a dangerous throw. We had two receivers basically cross pass when the ball got there. There were all sorts of bodies near that one. Yeah, lucky that that one fell incomplete. Another third down for Spartanburg. Again, four of seven on third down conversions tonight. The Gaffney fans coming to their feet. Raheem in the shotgun. Twins to either side. 8.42 to play in the third quarter. They show blitz again. Nobody's near Jay Staggs. Raheem back to throw. They bring everybody, and we throw it to Dreek Carter, and it's behind them, and it's incomplete. Are they going to say, is that official going to say that that was a backwards pass? There's no way that's humanly possible. That's what he's They saying. are. They're going to rule that a fumble. Oh, that's incredible. That's a terrible, terrible call. And this will make the field goal longer now. It'll be 46 yards from the right hash. Made one from 47 a little bit ago. I don't like that call at all. That they ruled that a fumble. This one against the winds just a little bit, though. Yeah, the winds died down. It's not swirling like it was in the first half. John Love from 46 yards from the right hash. Really good snap. Kick is on the way, Short. and I don't think so, Tyler. It's no good. Maybe that win kind of blew it just a little bit and blew it back and the Gaffney Indians get a huge stop. We had great field position. Tyler third and five, they brought the house. We had a perfect play call, but couldn't execute it. Yeah, uh, couldn't execute it, give it up. You have to kick the field goal and you know, the un unexplained call of a fumble instead of an incomplete pass there makes the field goal just out of reach. It you does. Got that, you got that five more yards. I mean, that ball probably goes through the upright. So. Um, that hurts the Vikings there, but of course it's a touchback in high school league football, and uh, the ball's at the 20. I, I wonder if we knew that was a fumble before we ran the field goal up team unit out there, if we would have still done that, because we went for it from fourth down there uh, earlier in the game and scored. Right. Loftus will hand this ball off up the middle, not much happening, but they power their way forward up to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. Blow the whistle, guys. What are you doing? Forward progress was stopped an hour ago. That's how you get people hurt, especially on a cold night. That's unnecessary. Second down and five, stopped by everybody. Cam Jackson was in there. Three down lineman for Spartanburg. We're really going a 3-2-6 right now, Tyler. A 3-2-6 for Spartanburg. We're basically using our speed with our safeties to get up there and help with the run. And basically going zero coverage right now. And they'll hand it off to Tyler Smith, stretches it out right, and he's upended around the first down marker by J.D. Lawson. They'll have the first down to the 32-yard line. What do we got here, Tyler? We have a sideline warning. Yep. Sideline warning on Spartanburg. So first and 10 for Gaffney at the 31. 24-21 Spartanburg, 7.35 to go in the third quarter on the Impex pre-owned scoreboard. 
Loftus in the shotgun, four wides, trips to the left. Loftus tried to get us to jump off sides. We didn't. It looked like DeAndre Davis was going to blitz. And now he slides out. We change up our defense here. Grayson in the shotgun, looking left, looking left, and going to take a shot down the middle. They got a man wide open. It's caught at the 45. We catch him from behind, but he gets all the way down to the Viking 27-yard line. Just slipped behind the coverage. It's Jadarius Littlejohn and the Gaffney Indians on the move, trying to take the lead with 7.05 to play in the third quarter. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And Tyler, again, we're really going no safeties to try to stop this run. Four wides, trips to the left again. Off this in the shotgun, will turn, they'll hand it off to Tyler Smith. Nice hole up the middle, cuts it to 15, he's gonna score, and Gaffney has taken the lead for the first time tonight. 27-24, a 27-yard touchdown run by Tyler Smith, his second of the night. And Gaffney will have an extra point coming up. Tyler, we talk about playing in chaos. It is chaos when you are down in the upper state finals in the second half. Our guys have been down. We were down several times last week. We bounced back. We're going to have to here. A.J. Haynes on for a big extra point. And it is up, and it is good. On Monday, if you haven't, call my friend Cliff Gobert, 597-1200. That's 597-1200, Cliff Gobert, State Farm Insurance. We'll take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking Football. close to 1,600 yards rushing this year. Woo. Wakefield Automotive Drive summary for the Gaffney Indians. Four plays, 80 yards, a 27-yard touchdown run by Tyler Smith. And the Gaffney Indians have taken the lead at 28-24 with 6.37 to play in the third quarter. Tyler, it's the first time tonight we've been down. How do our guys need to respond from this? You just got to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, they've been really good offensively all season long and been able to play from behind. You know, they were down to Dorman Big going into the fourth quarter and were able to to keep their heads on straight. Just got to keep doing that here, keep playing football, and keep doing what you've been doing all season long. All our kicks are brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Law, 101 Lafayette Street, downtown Spartanburg. Thousands of folks here at Viking Stadium tonight watching a classic 28-24 Gaffney, 6.37 to play in the third quarter. Would Gaffney dare to try an onside kick after their defense just got a big stop? Tyler, it looks like they're going to kick this really short. It's more of a line drive kick that's going to be caught by J.D. Lawson at the 15. He'll come left side, get past one to the 25, break a tackle, stay on his feet, get to the Viking sideline, and he's slung down at the 29-yard line by Jesus Littlejohn. And so here comes Raheem Jeter, like we said, for the first time tonight, trailing in this one, 28-24. go right back down and score. We've been up by two possessions in this game. We've had the lead in the ball, but Gaffney has fought their way back. Here comes Raheem, Little, Raheem Jeter. All sorts of little Johns out on the field for Gaffney. Jeter in the shotgun, trips to the right. Ball on the near hash, moving from our right to left. We hand it off to Dreet Carter, fumble, fumble. I think Gaffney has it, they do. Gaffney has it on the 32-yard line, and they just now realize it. Tyler, last week, we were down three and fumbled right near the exact same spot, and our defense held, and we were able to come back. We're going to have to again this week because Gaffney smells blood right now. Tyler, is that Dreek's first fumble of the year? I don't remember any other one. I don't remember a single other one. 
I really don't. I don't remember a single other one. Gaffney football, they lead by four at the Viking 32 yard line. Three wide receivers, Tyler Smith the tailback. They bring a man in motion. They run the same play they scored on a while ago on that 80 yard run. They give it to Smith. He spins out of one of the 30 and the McGimsey slams him from behind down to the 29 yard line for a gain of three yards. I mean, Tyler, he hit him in his lower back and popped Tyler Smith's head straight back and put him to the ground. Big hit there by Judah McGimsey. Gaffney quickly to the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven from the Viking 29. Under six to play in the third quarter. Loftus in the shotgun. They'll turn, they'll hand it off to Smith again, right up the middle, and Cam Jackson there grabs him and pulls him down to the 26. Had to bring up third and four. Good tackle by the junior, who just got an offer this week from West Virginia. It's a big offer. Yeah, it is. Tyler, look at this, we're bringing in the Hosses. Ran two guys on, gotta run somebody else off. Got to run somebody else off. Javaris Rice is going to sacrifice this here. And he's going to come off the field even though he wasn't supposed to. They bring in the power package and we go heavy as well. Third down and four. They try to get to the outside. Cole holding. holding. They're not going to. Man, that's, awful. that's awful. And Tyler Smith's going to have a first down. What are they looking at? What is he looking at? That is an absolute blown call. <laughs> And a first and goal for the Gaffney Indians. I beg your pardon, it's gonna be first and 10 to the 11, my apologies. What is he looking at? A very, very, very bad no call that time. That really may dictate this game because that would have been a huge penalty for Gaffney. Instead, it's first and 10 at the 11. God, what is he looking at? Trips to the right, Loftus in the shotgun. Little John's the tailback, they give it to him. He cuts it up the middle on a nice play and he gets all the way down to the two. Maybe just short of the first down to Gaffney. Looks like they're about to score here, Tyler. Yeah, they do, pushing it down close to the two yard line. Yard shot of the first down, two yards shot of the goal line. Heavy package coming in for Gaffney. They're going to direct snap this to Tyler Smith. We run Murph Epps on. We run Daryl Brandon on. And they go up the middle. And Tyler, I don't think he got anything. No. Daryl Brandon came flying in the game as a nose tackle that time. Made a great play. It's third and one. They may have even lost a foot that time. You got Brandon and Murph Epps and Cam Jackson in there. That's about 1,000 pounds right there up the middle. Same formation. Gaffney going to run it with Tyler Smith right up the gut. Tyler's second effort, third effort. He's got it. Touchdown. Just waiting for the call. He's laying in the end zone. They got to come see it. There it is. And Gaffney is going up 34-24 with 3.54 left to go in the third quarter with an extra point coming up. Tyler, I go back to that no holding call. A call that absolutely made that play but it turns into a Gaffney touchdown. Give the Indians credit. They made every other play except that one, which should have been called back, but they battled on that play. Tyler Smith, another touchdown run for that senior. And Hames' extra point is up and good. 3.54 left to go in the third quarter. Now Spartanburg is down by a couple of scores. Can we respond? We'll find out next. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking Football. I don't know how you missed that call. I mean, that it's the offensive tackle holding the end. The end has outside position and he can't run. And he lets go of him after he gets past him. I just, how do you miss that call? Wow. Wakefield Automotive Drive for summary, six plays, 32 yards for the Gaffney Indians. Tyler Smith runs it in from two yards out, and Gaffney has seized the lead at 35-24, an 11-point game, 3.54 to play in the third. 
Five chili dogs for $7.99. That's the deal right now at Little Rick's East on Asheville Highway. Big day of college football tomorrow. Watch it while eating some chili dogs. Five chili dogs, $7.99. Little Rick's East, Asheville Highway. All our kicks this year brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Law, 101 Lafayette Street, downtown Spartanburg. All right, Tyler, 35-24, Gaffney has responded well. There's a ton of time in this football game, but we've got to respond and go down and score a touchdown right here. Yeah, made a mistake. We fumbled the football away. They took advantage of it, and they've taken a, a commanding lead, an 11-point lead right now. We've got to answer right here. Hames with the low ground ball kick that's going to get past Javaris Rice. He'll pick it up, and it's in the end zone, and he falls on it. And Tyler's going to be a touchback. We call it a break. Big break. We call it a big break. Mm -mm -mm. Just don't look like we're responding well to the chaos right now. Tyler Terry and Nelson is in the ball game at tailback. Here we go. Four wide receivers, plenty of time. First and 10 on our own 20 yard line, 354 to go in the third quarter. They hand it off to Nelson. He goes right up the middle, not much there. Brayshawn Littlejohn, the outside linebacker who came in on the blitz, was there with the stop and gain of one at second and nine. Second down and nine. Jeter in the shotgun, same formation again for the Vikings. Moving from our right to left, Jeter takes a snap. They blitz, we pick it up, we throw it underneath. It's caught by Quay Moore, and he'll be stretched out to the 26-yard line for a gain of five. It'll bring up third down and four. Quay's fifth catch of the night. It's a big play right here, Tally. Got to have this first down. Got to have this first down. Same formation again for Spartanburg. They show blitz with both outside linebackers. Cheater looks over at Gray Ramsey. His quarterback coach who sends in the play. Nelson goes to the right of Raheem Cheater. Got to get to our own 30 yard line. Play clock down to 10. Raheem pointing out where he thinks the blitz is going to come from. He's right. And here they come. They bring five. Raheem steps up. Ball is batted in the air at the line of scrimmage, and it falls incomplete. And it'll be a three and out stop for the Gaffney defense, and they've got all the momentum right now with 2.34 left to go in the third quarter. And Tyler, if that ball gets through, our guy's wide open for a first down. Yeah, sometimes you just get lucky, get those hands up, get them in the passing lane, and knock that ball in the air. Tyler, we got to be careful here. We need a big play from our defense because if they happen to score a touchdown and make the extra point, it becomes a three possession game. And this game has been back and forth and so close all night, and Spartanburg has had the edge all night. But Gaffney has come out rolling here. High, good kick, fair catch called for and made at the 34 yard line by, K by Kalber Hoey. Well, I want to thank our good friend, Dr. Beatenball at Align Life Chiropractic. I had to issue a while back with my back, one visit there, and it was done. I mean, just like that. That breathing issue went completely away. That's what I want in a chiropractor, somebody who fixes the problems. Dr. Beanball at Align Life Chiropractic. Visit him on East Main Street in Spartanburg. Longtime supporter of Spartanburg Viking football. Thank you so much, Dr. Beanball, a life, Align Life Chiropractic. First and 10 for the Gaffney Indians at their own 34. They lead by 11, getting late in the third quarter. Man in motion. They turn, they hand it off right up the middle. Nice hole, breaking a tackle. Here comes a flag. And Tyler, let's give the umpire a nice slow clap here. Finally got a hole. <laughs> I mean, and sometimes you just want to look at a referee crew and say, listen, as much as this team runs the football, and this is, by the way, I think it's going to be on us. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. And the guy tackled him and laid on top of him. Face mask on Spartanburg. You got to be kidding me. As much as Gaffney runs the football, you're telling me they don't hold every once in a while? Man, how is that not being called tonight? 
if you're going to play Gaffney and you're not going to get a holding call, I'm not real sure what you're supposed to do on defense. Goodness gracious, Loftus of the shotgun. They'll turn, they'll hand it off to Little John right up the gut. Not much, but he does fall forward to the 43-yard line. They'll give him the 42 for a gain of five. Judah McGypsy there with a the tackle. Second down and five. Nice run by Ken Littlejohn. 1.52 to go in the third. We trail by 11. Tyler, we were really the better team for about the first 27 minutes of this ball game. In the last about eight, it's been all Gaffney. And I mean all Gaffney. We almost jumped off sides, but we didn't. Yeah, we did. Oh, no! No! I've lined up even with it. No, we didn't. Oh, no! Oh, no! And that's going to be another first down for Gaffney. It's right at the first down marker. Tyler, I was lined right up with it. No, we didn't. Goodness, Knight. They haven't marked this a first down yet. They really should. It's right at it. I don't know what they're looking at. And now the far sideline official comes in and says, guys, this might be a first down. I don't think he's wrong. Clock will stop with 1.26 to go. Tyler, how do you flip this momentum? Because the way they're going right now, this doesn't look pretty. You're going to have a turnover. And they gave him a first down. I mean, that's a good call. It's right at the first down marker. Tyler, we're bringing in a fourth down lineman again. When you go three down lineman, you try to run up the middle. They're doing that, and they're doing it with some success. We're going to go back to a 4-4 here. Three wide receivers. First and 10 for Gaffney at R37. Boy, we need a big turnover right here. Can we get it? Can we get it? Loftus in the shotgun, back to throw. Looking over the middle, wide open, caught at the 20, at the 15, 10, 5, and it's a touchdown. Wow. Edward Jeffries, his fourth touchdown reception of the year. And you talk about an absolute dominant, dominant eight minutes of football. Tip of the cap to the Gaffney Indians. They will score 21 points in about seven minutes. Incredibly impressive. And they're starting to feel it on their side. They're undefeated for a reason, folks. Extra point is up, and it is good. We'll take a 30-second timeout. 42-24, Gaffney, you're listening to Viking Football. Wakefield Automotive Drive Summary, three plays, 65 yards, a 37-yard touchdown pass from Lofton to Jeffries. Loftus to Jeffries makes it 42-24 in favor of the Gaffney Indians. 58 seconds going to third quarter. Dutch Fork 21, Fort Dorchester 7. Don't forget, we do have victory formation coming up following this one. It'll be the last victory formation of the year. It's the last Friday football frenzy of the year. As if Spartanburg were to have an epic comeback or Gaffney wins this, whatever happens, they would play next Saturday at 5 o'clock. So this will be the last Friday football frenzy of the year. Tyler, an absolute dominant eight minutes here by the Gaffney Indians. Kickoff brought to you by Whit Bishop, attorney at law. J.D. JD Lawson will catch this and be brought down at the 25-yard line. Tyler was an incredible first half by our guys, but as you pointed out, Gaffney just doesn't panic. And this is a very experienced Gaffney football team who just simply doesn't panic, and they are not panicking right now. And they have not panicked at all in this third quarter. We have got to score, and we have got to score in a hurry. Down 18 with 54 seconds to go in the third quarter on the Impex pre-owned scoreboard. 
Jeter in the shotgun, play action pass, looking, looking, and throws it, and it's incomplete. Intended for Quay Moore, I beg your pardon, intended for Jay Staggs. He was under heavy pressure that time. It's second and 10. Tyler, is Dreek hurt? No, he's back in. Okay. I saw Nelson in there. Langston Green out, Quay Moore back in, second and 10. They show blitz again. We're throwing a backside screen caught by Danton, trying to get back to the outside. He's hit from behind, and this is going to be a block in the back on Spartanburg. Here, here's the rule of thumb, and I think this is very fair to say when these two teams play. We throw so many different screens and backdoor cuts that we're probably going to get a block, or, block in the back or two every game. I think that's fair to say. Gaffney, the way they run the football, similar to Dorman, the way they run and stretch it, they should get about two to four holdings a game as well. They don't have any tonight. And we've got our usual block in the backs. And I just look at that, and, and don't get me wrong, the officials have done a very nice job. They've made some good calls. But I just look at that and go, come on, guys, what, what are you looking at with some of these runs? And it's just a little frustrating that everybody can see it but them, which I'm sure that was in a cluster of players there. I'm sure that was a good call, and that's fine. I mean, I understand. But, man, it's frustrating not to get those calls sometimes when they're so obvious on our end. Raheem back to throw, second down in a whole bunch. He takes a shot, and it's way overthrown at the 30-yard line intended for Andrew Danton. Mark Hodge and our staff really wanting pass interference that time, but we're not going to get it. Tyler, that ball was really overthrown. Yeah, it was, and that's probably why he's not going to get the penalty. So third down and 23 from our 12-yard line. Tyler, we're talking about the Gaffney offense here, though. At the same time, let's talk about the job the Gaffney defense has done in this third quarter. I mean, yeah, wow. They, they've been really good. Here's a blitz up the middle. Raheem steps up. Now he'll be shuffled to the right. He's going to have to run for it. He's got a long way to go. He'll get just short of the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and 12. And Tyler, with 10 seconds to go, this should be the end of the third quarter, a quarter that may have gotten Gaffney a trip to the state title. 42-24, Gaffney on top, fourth and 11 when we come back. To quarter number four we go. This is Viking football. to quarter number four we go where Gaffney really dominated the fourth quarter the third quarter they now lead 42 24 Tyler you, we were the better team in the first half we were the better team to start the third quarter and it's the Gaffney defense that really stepped up big in quarter number three no doubt about it yeah we held them to three and out they uh, forced a field goal we missed it and they took off from there as they're going to get the ball right here. Oh, that was a great punt. Well, we just ran a 12th guy on the field for some reason. John Love kicks this all the way down to the 11-yard line. No, we had 11 guys now. We were short a guy. They shouldn't call that a penalty. We had 11. We had 10 guys on the field. They threw a flag because we ran one on late. The problem was, Tyler, here's the issue. It's not that we had 12 guys on the field. We were offside by about 15 yards. We ran a player on the field, and he he got on the field way down the field. So we were offsides. 
Oh, Never just a, to talk about this a long time. Middle mistake there. That's the problem. So it's offsides on us. We had a guy way offsides. So we have to back up five yards to do this again. This time they'll run a returner down there. What a kick by John Love. The Prisma Health postgame show will be following this fourth quarter. Tyler does look like the winner of this one is going to play Dutch Fork in the state title. Anyone shocked? <laughs> Hearing them. Good luck. So John Love back on his own five-yard line this time. They have a return man back there. Boom, this one, John. This might be your last punt of your career at Spartan High. That's a good one. Spiraling kick. Going to hit at the 50, take a Viking roll, and we'll pick it up at the 45-yard line. Gaffney's got a player down at the 15. Gives us time to tell you about Little Pigs Barbecue. Want to thank Little Pigs, another year sponsoring Spartanburg Viking football. This week, I want you to check out the hash. It's a good week for hash. Hash over rice this week at Little Pigs Barbecue. 42-24 Gaffney here in the fourth quarter, a game which had so much intensity early in this one. Flipped its script. About a third of the way through the third quarter. And they hand it off to Tyler Smith. He goes up the middle, breaking a tackle. Actually, I think that's Little John. He'll get to the Viking 48-yard line again to seven. Judah McGypsy and Cam Jackson on the tackle. Well, Tyler, we can't say enough about the two seniors that have led this team in tackling this year, Tyler. Judah McGypsy and J.D. Lawson coming into today combined for 246 tackles. They're well over 250 between the group after tonight. And the, the job that those two seniors have done for our defense this year has been just incredible. Loft is back to throw under pressure by Dawkins. He'll take off and run for it and he'll Step out of bounds right at the first down marker, and he should have it. But Tyler, those two seniors have been awesome. Yeah, they have. They've been really good. They've led this defense. It's been really good all season long, and it's gotten better and better as each game has gone along. But those are the guys, Judy McGimpsey and J.D. Lawson, uh, that you circled as the leaders on this defense. Really good job, guys. Tyler, this uh, it, it has been thought all year that we're doing this a year early. So what a run we've made here. Talk about this going forward a little bit. Here's a handoff to Little John going right. And not much happening. Duncan Dawkins flies over there to make another tackle. He's had a tremendous year, the junior. Tyler, you look at this defense. We'll start there. McGypsy, DeAndre Davis, J.D. Lawson, Javaris Rice. Four senior starters will be gone. But you bring back a Micah Harris, a Jaden Brown, a Jacob Madison, Benji Littlejohn, Duncan Dawkins, Cam Jackson, Ian Squires, Damian Coach should be back next year. That's a great place to start. It really is. <laughs> Goodness me. They'll hand this off up the middle, breaking a tackle. Getting to about the 37 is Littlejohn. It'll bring up third down and two. Offensively, Tyler, Quay Moore, Andrew Danton, Dreek Carter, Raheem Jeter. You look at J.D. Cash, Cairo Owens, Daryl Brannon on the offensive line, and then, of course, this tremendous C team that we've got coming up. Tyler, make no mistake here. This, this Viking football team is going to – the future is looking incredibly bright in 2022. Yeah, a lot of guys returning on that offensive side of the ball. Should make Viking fans very excited. Tyler Smith trying to stretch it out left. He's not going to get it. In fact, he's going to lose a yard. Mark Hodge really upset. And I know why he's upset, too, because one of their offensive linemen reached out and grabbed Daryl Brandon by the horse collar and held him back that time, it looked like. And Coach wanted a hold. He's not going to get it. He was not happy. Fourth down and three. And I think Gaffney's going to punt this away with under nine to play in this one. Tyler, make no mistake, 2022 
I don't know what the regions are going to be. Gaffney loses a lot of talent. Spartanburg's going to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite, to come out of the upper state yeah, really in 2022. Should be. Really should be. We come after the punt. It's a low kick. We don't get it. It'll check up at the 15. Nice kick by Hames. It'll check up at the 12. Hey, listen, you're looking for a gift idea this holiday season? Go by and see our friends at Spartan Photo Center. You can check out their website, SpartanPhotoCenter.com. That's SpartanPhotoCenter.com. Well, we'll look to the future for the next nine months, but I just want to give a tip of the cap to our senior, Styler. On offense, Zach Moore, Chase Rose. I hate that Coach Rose isn't here to watch his son, but he's got the best seat in the house up from up above. Dre Sims, Taheem Richardson, Jay Staggs. Not a lot of seniors on offense, but those who play have done a terrific job. As Jeter's back to pass, he'll throw it. The ball's bats out of his hand. It's a fumble, and Gaffney picks it up, and they score. It's Clay Putnam who puts it in the end zone. And unfortunately, Tyler, this one is over. That's a great play by Gaffney. Give them all the credit in the world there. That's a tremendous play. And this score, Tyler, is not going to represent what this game was. As Spartanburg Viking fans, Tyler, are heading out. And Gaffney knows that they are eight minutes and 20 seconds from taking their undefeated record to Benedict College as the extra point is up and good. We'll take a 30 second timeout. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking football. It was a good ride. This was a great team. This is a great team. I've, I've really enjoyed this season a lot. This, this is a great team. But they are really good over there. Well, Tyler, let, let's give a tip of the cap to the Gaffney Indians here as they have shown us why they are undefeated. We are a very different looking team, and we gave them a heck of a ball game. But Gaffney has poured it on here. Clay Putnam with the scoop and score. Gaffney leads 49 to 24. Yeah, they've been really good, both sides of the football. You, you've said it a couple of times, that's why they're undefeated. And we saw a very good Gaffney team coming here, going to get a win tonight. They're going to the state championship uh, to take on a very good Dutch Fork team. Should be an epic uh, next Saturday night down there at Benedict College. Well, a heck of a ball game by our guys tonight. And again, so the talk is going to be, can Gaffney beat Dutch Fort? Tyler, as good as Gaffney is, and I've seen them twice, what they're not is they're not nearly as fast as Dutch Fort. What they are is more physical than Dutch Fort. And Hames will kick a high short kick that'll go out of bounds. Just That was, that was weird. But Tyler, this was... Uh, this is a Gaffney team that certainly next week will try to run the football and pound on Dutch Fork as much as they can. But Dutch Fork's speed, in my opinion, is going to give Gaffney some problems. To be honest with you, and I know a lot of Viking fans who, who don't like our rivals, I kind of would love a state title to come out of Dutch Fork's hands and come back to the upstate, to be honest with you. It'd be nice to kind of see. I'm tired of Dutch Fork winning, even if that means if Gaffney has to win. I don't know. I just, I'm just so sick of Dutch Fork winning yeah, it over it's old. and over. It's really old. You know what, though? It would be really good for high school football in the state of South Carolina if Dutch Fork didn't win this year. And Terry and Nelson's got it, and he's swallowed up in the backfield. And Tyler, our guys look like they're done. And they, they look like they know, and they know. Terry and Nelson getting some carries. Tyler, another young player for this Viking team, just a junior will have a much bigger role next year. He was hurt a bunch this year. Tyler, I'm so proud of this team. I'm so proud of Spartan High. 
and the way we've played second and 12. Raheem over the middle, caught by Quay Moore on a little underneath route, and it'll be brought down at the 36-yard line for a gain of just a couple. It'll be third and 11. And again, I know that's, you know, brutal to say you want Gaffney to win. I just don't want Dutch Fork to win. That's, that's what I'm pulling for. Just not Dutch Fork. Not pulling for Gaffney, but you know what? You know who I'm pulling for, though? I'm pulling for Chris Miller. Hey. That's, that's, that's what I want to happen. I love Coach Miller, so I guess that's what I'm pulling for. Third down and 11. Gaffney has switched to this where they're blitzing off the edge a good bit. And it's, it's caused us some problems. And that ball's intended for Taheem Richardson and it's overthrown. And it'll be another three and out. Whatever Gaffney has done defensively besides just that, blitzing off the edge. And we just had to call a timeout. We're gonna go for this on fourth and 11. Whatever they've done defensively, you gotta give them a lot of credit. And you see, Tyler, some of our players really showing their frustration here. It's some of our seniors who know. And it's hard, Tyler, it's hard when you know. It is. That, that's really tough. You know, it's, I was lucky enough when my career ended, it was on the last play. And I got to go in the dugout where nobody could see me and I got to vent and I got to cry and I got to, to share my emotion. In football, you can't do that. This field is wide open. In basketball, you can't do that. Everything is wide open. Uh, and it's hard when you're a senior to, to know your career is coming to an end. And, you know, I, I don't mind the frustration. I, I don't mind players getting upset. These are high school kids. And some of our guys really showing their frustration right now. And you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll never, and Tyler, you know me, I, I, that never bothers me because when you show that much emotion, it means you care. And one of the things I have loved about this football team is how much our guys have cared and how much this has mattered to them in this massive turnaround. And I know Dan Jones has done a terrific job, but Mark Hodge is the coach of the year around here. And the job that he's done this year for Spartanburg, we won 10 games in three years. The job he's done this year has just been incredible. Raheem back to pass on fourth down and 11. Throws it over the middle and he was under heavy pressure and it falls incomplete. And it'll be Gaffney football. And the Gaffney Indians are gonna go play Dutch Fork for the state championship. Daniel, by the way, leads Chester 36 to 20. South Point over Greenville right now, 24 to seven. Great collegiate, only up a touchdown on Newberry. Is the entire state pulling for Newberry right now? I would think so. And it's official, Dutch Fork, it has gone final. They have beaten Fort Dorchester 21 to 14. One of the things that I don't know that Gaffney can do, Tyler, is I don't think they have anybody that can stay with Antonio Williams. Number 10, if he's gonna play defense. If he's gonna play defense. And he may. And they give it to number 10, he goes right up the middle, and he spun forward down the 24 yard line. Gaffney, by the way, still has their starters in for some reason. I don't know why. They're up 49-24 with 6.39 to play. Honestly, that's pretty stupid to have Tyler Smith in this ball game right now. He could get hurt. And boy, you talk about the one guy on that team that can't get hurt for next week, it's Tyler Smith. Coach Hodge told me this week, Tyler, that they have all the pressure. We have no pressure. And I thought we played like it tonight. I thought our guys played loose. I thought we, we looked like we were having fun, enjoyed the moment. And they'll turn, they'll hand it off to Tyler Smith again, who's got to be over 200 yards for the night now. After that gain of three, brought down by Harrison Danton, another senior. Cam Jackson going to come back in. Looks like Ian Squires is going to come up limping a little bit. And Tyler Smith will head out of the game. I don't know why he was in there to begin with. So Javari Bonner, who's in at tailback it is. Five and a half to go in this one. Or 
wide receivers. Turn Bonner will get this, and right up the middle, not much, maybe a yard, a swarm of Vikings there, including Cam Jackson, Duncan Dawkins, and Murph Epps, the senior. How about Murph Epps this year? Three tackles for a loss, had a big force fumble earlier this year. Third down and seven, 49-24, Gaffney. taking their time. And they'll hand it off to Bonner, and he won't get much. Is that Judah? It sure was. is. Sure is. Another tackle for a loss for Judah McJimsey. That's 26 on the season. Timeout brought to you by Watchworks, 1040 Fernwood, Glendale Road. Watchworks has all your watch needs. Well, Tyler, you hate to lose this way. You hate it to end this way. Sometimes you, you, this may be better than the heartbreak on the last play. That'll sting for a while, but it, it, it all, in all seriousness, at the end of the night, you just look to the other side, tip your cap, and say, boy, I can't wait for next year, because I, I truly believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that going into next season, that knowing what Northwestern loses, knowing what Hannah loses, and knowing what Gaffney loses, I think without question, we are the top team in the upstate going into 2022. Yeah, I would, I would argue that as well. It's gonna be a great season next year, bringing all these folks back. It should be a lot of fun. This one hurts tonight, but another year. They're going to go for it on fourth and nine over the middle. Oh, wow, what a catch for a touchdown. Edward Jeffries. Goodness me. Throwing touchdown passes up 49-24. That's typical Gaffney that fashion for you right typical there. Typical Gaffney fashion. Remember when I said I'm not pulling for Dutch Fork? Yeah, I might. Goodness me. Yeah, I might after that. That was uncalled for. There's, there's no reason to be doing that whatsoever especially with your starters. Yeah, there, there's no excuse for that. That's not necessary to do. The extra point is up and good. Uh, we'll keep it right here. I just, I've known Dan Jones for a while. I like him a lot. Dan, that's that's not necessary, brother. That's that's inexcusable right there. There's, there's no reason for that. Our guys had kind of settled in. You had been running it, running it. We're kind of settling in. You know, we're pulling some guys, and you just drop a dart over the middle. On fourth you, down. You know, you know what? Let's let's remember that next year. Let's I, somebody write to, that down. I've come to notice that over the years in football, stuff like that comes back to bite you in the butt. It really does. Let's somebody write that down, because. I have a feeling it'll bite them in the butt next year. You know what? It, it might. It might. That, that kind of. That was really unnecessary. Our season this year is brought to you by Chris Foster Heating and Air. Our friend Chris Foster, second year as the title sponsor of Spartanburg Viking football. Boy, we're gonna have a great year next year, guys. I can't wait. Boy, I hope we somebody write that down and let's just let's remember that play next year. Despite that, Tyler, despite that nonsense there on that play that there's no excuse for. This Gaffney team is well-deserved. Well-deserved to be in the state title game. Listen, they're 14-0. They beat a very good red-hot Spartanburg team. They beat Northwestern on the road. Uh, they beat Burns earlier this year. They beat Dorman earlier this year. They beat T.O. Hanna. To be honest with you, they're the team who's beaten everybody. And you got to give them credit. They kick this off, brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Long. We get it up to the 28. Oof. And the way Dan Jones was celebrating that on the sideline, that just. Mm. 
By the way, I said 28. I don't know what I'm talking about. It was a 22. Oh, can I give a Todd Ellis check that? Check that, 22. <laughs> uh, Raheem Jeter in the ball game. Might be the last drive of the season for our guys. We turn, we hand it off right up the middle. And may have gotten to the 26-yard line. That's going to be it. That's Terry and Nelson. Now you're seeing a lot of pushing and shoving going on. Brayshawn Littlejohn is a terrific ball player. He's a little chatty. And he's been doing a lot of talking, and we've ignored it pretty much this quarter. We did not ignore it right there. And one of our guys just turned and shoved him, and the official looked at him and told Brayshawn to go back to his huddle. Nelson gets it again, and Brayshawn Littlejohn comes in and makes a nice play in the backfield. And this time he gets up and just walks away. Third down and eight, under three and a half to play. Third down and about eight for Raheem Jeter from our own 24-yard line. Four wide receivers, Raheem looking, looking, throws it down the far sideline. Nice catch. Did he hang on to that, Andrew Danton? He did. He sure did. Wow, what a year by the junior wide receiver, Andrew Danton, to make that grab at the 39-yard line. And Gaffney's got a player down. Gaffney, by the way, has a lot of starters in the game. I have no idea why. And I hope this young man is okay, because I don't want to see anybody injured and a chance to play for a state title game. I don't care if you like a team or not. That's, we're all adults and these are kids. I hope that young man's okay. He shouldn't be in the ball game if that's a starter, but God, I hope he's all right. As both staff sprinted out to him immediately. There you go, hop up. And that's Brayshawn Littlejohn. Now, I hope he's all right. Why is he in the ball game, Dan Jones? Hopefully he just got the win knocked out. I hope so. Why is he in the ball game? Goodness gracious. 56-24, and your starting defense is on the field. My goodness. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I hope he's all right. He's really walking off the field slowly. He's finally to their sideline. First and 10 at the 39-yard line for Spartanburg. Raheem in the shotgun, Tyrion Nelson the tailback. Dre Carter over here on the sideline with his helmet on. He's all right. Tyrion gonna get some looks. Raheem throws it down the field. Incomplete intended for Danton. Tyler, they brought heavy pressure again that time. And that was Clay Putnam, the young man who had the scoop and score earlier. Another starting defensive end. And now, Tyler, it looks like after that last play, they put a couple of new guys on the field. Second down and 10. 2.38 to go in the season. We'll give it to Nelson, nice hole on the right. It closes in a hurry, and he gets to the 41-yard line. Well, terrific crowd tonight. Congratulations to our fans, the Viking fans, who, again, Tyler, oh, my goodness, that line to get out of here. Man, oh, man, alive. But to, if for all of you listening to the game right now, I'm looking at the taillights. Just want to say thanks for showing up. I'd love for us to put a crowd like this together next year. As Taheem Richardson makes a grab to the 45, to the 50, he'll have a first down. I'd love for us to put crowds like this on several nights next year. We're going to get burns here next year. Uh, you know, we'll have some, we'll have a lot of fun at this stadium next year. I'd love for you guys to come out as much as you can next year. If we can host some playoff games, get out here early rounds. And let's put big crowds out here every night like this. You see how much fun this team is. We've got a great group. A lot of these kids are back next year, including our quarterback, who takes a shot for Taheem Richardson down the field. Taheem goes up and makes a crab at the 11 yard line. Tyler, surprised maybe we didn't do that earlier, but it did look like they were double teaming him a lot. Yeah, they were early, uh, earlier in this game, and you know, fortunately for him, he's going to get a couple more catches here. Hopefully, we can get him another touchdown his senior season. It's been really good. 
Three wide receivers, Langston Green, the senior who's been playing with a broken leg. And it's healed enough where he can go back out and play. It was fractured. He's out there playing and not the same player he was before, but he's like, I'm fine. The doctor cleared it, but he's out there playing, giving everything he's got. He's playing in a lot of pain, and I love it. Jeter back to throw, takes a shot for Tahim again. He goes up, all oh, right off a shoulder pad, incomplete. Bring up second and 10, 102 to play in the season. Big thanks to the Viking fans who, again, are trying to file out of here. Great collegiate held on to beat Newberry 35-28. By the way, if you're trying to leave the stadium right now, it looks like there are two fire trucks and an ambulance right there on Main Street. It looks like there's a wreck. There's multiple police cars. Oh, goodness gracious, Tyler. Raheem Jeter to Tahim Richardson in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. There you go. Tahim holds on for that touchdown. How about it? There you go, Tahim. What a way to end your high school career. Well done. That's 10 for him this season. He's had a really good senior season. Well, real quick, too, just to let everybody know, if you're trying to, maybe you're, you've cut on the game to try to figure out what's going on, I've got a great view over there on Main Street. There are multiple fire trucks, multiple ambulances, and multiple police cars. And that's the reason for the traffic jam over there. And Spartanburg going to kick an extra point with 55 seconds left. And John Love for one final time, brought to you by Whit Bishop Attorney at Law. We'll keep it right here. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're trying to get out of the game and you're wondering why it's going so slow, that's why there is a wreck on Main Street right outside the school. So that would be the reason that traffic is really moving as slow as it is. So everybody be patient, don't get frustrated. The folks up there aren't going slow for uh, on, per, you know, on purpose. They're trying to be as safe as they can getting out of here. So everybody be real patient leaving this ball game tonight. Fifty-six to thirty-one. As Gaffney is going to play for the state championship. That is a lot of fire trucks over there, Tyler. It is. That is a lot of fire trucks. We're going to try an onside kick here, Tyler. Yeah, might as well. I don't think so. I think it's going to boom this one away. How about one last touchback for the senior? There you go. Get on in there, guys. How about the year for John Love, Tyler? My he's, goodness. He's been really good Woo. and deserving. You know, he's going to Virginia Tech to play up there for the Hokies, and uh, we wish him all the best. He's been good here at Swartburg High School, kicking some long field goals, and those touchbacks have been very valuable for the Vikings. So again, if you're trying to leave the stadium, be patient. There is a wreck out there on Main Street and traffic is not moving. And it looks like now maybe up front there, it's moving very, very slowly out. So it's like some cars are able to leave. And Gaffney will take a couple of knees. Actually, they only have to take one because they started the clock early. So they'll take one knee, and that'll do it. The Prisma Health postgame show is coming up next. Gaffney moves on to the state championship. You're listening to Spartanburg Viking football.